Hi, Assalamualaikum. My name is Nur Aina Hamza, and today my friend and I will explain about the experiment 1 and 2 which have done in class. In this experiment, we learn how to separate the organic compound, liquid liquid extraction, precipitation, and also distillation. Purification of organic compound, which is recrystallization and separation, and also identification of organic compound, melting point, determination, and thin layer chromatography. So, first, extraction is the process applied to separate an organic compound from an aqueous solution or suspension. Organic substances are acidic. Natural or basic are usually insoluble in water and soluble in organic solvent. Acidic organic compounds react with the aqueous solution of base, and organic base react with aqueous solution of acid to form a water soluble substance. So, in this experiment, for the apparatus, we use separated final retort stand, basic balance, spatulas, shake flask, parafilm, rolling stone, DCL, HCL, and also an OH. To prepare the mixture, first, we label flask as acid, base, natural, and also mixture. As you can see in this picture, we shall form them as A, B, N, and mix. Then, weight every compound plus minus 0.2 gram to dissolve it with 10 ml of dichloromethane. Next, by using separating panel, we add 5% of sodium hydroxide solution and shake it vigorously. Then, we can see the layer. But don't forget to release the pressure by opening the stock cork. Next, run off the bottom layer through the salt coat into the mixture flask. So, the other layer we put in the acid flask. This method will repeat two times or more to improve the extraction and efficiency. To extract base and natural, we use the same method as acid, but use different solution which we put hydrochloric acid. So, the bottom layer we put in the base flask, and the other layer we put in natural flask that contain the natural compound. For the natural compound, we add a water and repeat the same method as acid, but we discard the outer layer which is aqueous. Then, let the natural flask open to evaporate. Do and don't in the lab. First, we have to wear a laboratory coat to protect your clothes and also use the glove as uh, we contact with the chemical region. Keep all the chemical away from your face and make sure to take the right region in the experiment because one of our group got their solution in pink. Do not measure, keep or mix any chemical in front of your face and don't point out the final bottom to your face when the stop cord as a pressure will straight to your face. For discussion part, discuss one example on how extraction process is carried out in the industry. Mention the type of the extraction equipment used and the idea behind the process. In order to extract a substance, an extraction solvent must be added to form a second liquid free solution. Generally, the desired substance is separated from the solvent by distillation and solvent is recycled. Sometimes, the selective action of the solvent is used in combination with distillation, extractive distillation or azeotropic distillation. Extraction solvents like dimethyl sulfide, morpholinis, sulfolin, and diethyl glycol are widely used in production of aromatic. And methyl pyrrolidine, dimethyl formidite, and acetronyl are also important solvents, especially for the extraction of separation of butyl and butadienite. Various type of mixture such as centrifugal extraction columns are used as extraction apparatus. All of them at the light face at the bottom of the column and the heavy face is removed from the top. The density difference causes a light face to rise through the heavy face and affect the mass transfer between the two faces. So Shakila, can you explain about the crystallization? Thank you, Anna. And now I will explain further on how recrystallization could purify the impure salt. Believe it or not, one of the most effective and widely used processes for removing impurities from organic compounds is recrystallization. In most situations, it is discovered that molecules only one compound will fit easily into the spaces between the lattice of the crystal.
few second sentences, various chemicals will crystallize within the same name. However, except for some new molecules, this is rare to be rare. This recrystallization is a great purifying technique because of its side effects. Both the few state and the solution can lead to the crystallization, but the latter is by far the best and the most common way to do it. Some tools and equipment are used to avoid several things. Avoid breathing, vapor, and prevent contact with skin or eyes. Use a steam bath to heat organic liquid. Note that only a small flow of steam is needed. Spills of acid or base on the skin should be washed immediately with a large amount of cool water. To defy your teaching existence or existence. So now, let's look on how base and acid could be purified by crystallization. For base, firstly, add 15 ml, 10% of sodium hydroxide in sodium hydroxide in hydrochloric acid in the base flask. Cool the mixture to room temperature, then add to spray funnel. Mix the base flask with dichloromethane and add to single flask. Stopper the funnel and shake vigorously. Spread the layers and run off the dichloromethane into the base flask. Repeat the extraction and now the base flask have organic base and also dichloromethane. Place the dichloromethane extract in the spreader referral. Add water, 20 ml, shade and allow the layers to separate. Grind the dichloromethane layer into a clean and airline layer flask. Dry over and anhydrous sodium sulfate and filter. System. If a black oil remains after heating, descend the clear liquid to discard the oil. For acid, add dry acid precipitate in single solvent glass and another half in mixed solvent glass. Add 5 ml hexane into single solvent glass and 5 ml methanol and water into mixed solvent glass. Heat them up until they boil. Add cool them down at room temperature. For the mixing mix solvent glass, immerse it. Vacuum filter, the crystal, and let it dry. Next, we will move to the part of sublimation of neutral compound. In the neutral flask that we have left them, we should see some bright crystal. Put the flask on the hot thing and please fill the test tube with some ice. Wipe the condensation on the outer surface of the test tube and clamp it so that it is suspended inside. The opening of the glass. Using the hot plate, gently warm the bottom of the glass. And remember, any moisture which appears on the bottom of the glass tube should be wiped off. And after a short time, crystal, the compound, will appear on the bottom of the test tube. Continue until the most of the compound has subsided. Scrub the crystal and save it in a petri dish for thin layer chromatography experiment. So now, let's look at on the results that we got during the experiment. That's all for my parts, and now I will pass to Nakia for further explanation. Naki? Thank you Shakila. Now I am Nur Nakia who will explain the next part which is TLC, also known as Thin Layer Chromatography. Briefly, TLC is a solid liquid partitioning chromatography techniques used for determining the purity of materials and for preliminary identification purposes and 
PLC is a very important technique for the rapid separation and qualitative analysis of small amounts of material. But before that, what is chromatography? Chromatography itself is a separation technique which a mixture compound is resolved by distributing the components of the mixture between two different phases, mobile phases and stationary phases. Moreover, different eluent or mobile phase have different capability to keep the compound. If the compound is a very polar, we need something that is capable to push them, so we can see separation. But if we use same mobile phase, the compound will not be separated. For this experiment equipment, we use Lika Delta LC plate, capillary tube, TLC development chamber, and UV lamp. Next, I'm going to share how to analyze a sample by using TLC. So firstly, we took a small amount known of acid, base, and neutral compound, then dissolve each of it in 5ml GCM, and repeat the same step for the isolated acid, base, and neutral compound. Secondly, we prepared two developing solvent in the flux. The first flux consists of hexene and ethanol with ratio 9 to 1 and the second flux consists of DCM and hexene with the same ratio. So, thirdly, we place 5 ml of each developing solvent into developing chamber. So, label the chamber same as the developing solvent in it. Then close the lid to prevent solvent from being evaporated. Next, we took silica gel to all plate containing fluorescent indicator, one for no sample and one for isolated sample. After that, we mark a horizontal line with a pencil about 1 cm from the bottom and then goes to the top of the plate. Then we spot all three of our known sample solution on the pencil line using capillary tube. For the capillary tube, we need to use a clean and different for each application to get an accurate result. After we spot the TLC plate, we place both of it into the two different developing chamber and let the solvent to rise until reaching the top line drawing. When we saw the solvent reach to the top, we remove the plate and we dry the plate. While drying, we can observe nothing is shown on the plate with our naked eyes because as we all know organic compound is colorless. That's why we use a short wave UV light source to visualize the components. Next, we make an outline each spot with a pencil so that we can trace the outline when UV light will turn off and it also useful for us to get the RF value easily and accurately. So after all done, we measure the distance traveled by each component compared to the solvent front and complete RF values. The higher RF values, the more far component located and the lower RF values, the near component located. But the, our, our error is we didn't draw the outline but we coloring the dot. So for this, we difficult to calculate the RF values because we don't have the outline. Last but not least, the most important part is we need to know the precautions of this experiment. There are three steps, which the first step is keep the hexane away from flame, as it is very flammable. Secondly, avoid contact with skin or eyes when using DCM, as it is toxic. And lastly, avoid direct skin eye contact with UV light, so we need to wear a protective shield when turn on the UV light and wear a glove when working under a light. So next, we will show you the result for this experiment. In that, we just done the selection process to differentiate a simple mixture which contain not too much compound in it. However, for petroleum distillation process, the mixture are complex since it contains more than 200 compounds to be separated. About 60% of aliphatic and 40% of aromatic hydrocarbon, which are toxic, needed to be separated in the petroleum distillation process. Petroleum refining process are the chemical engineering process and other facilities used in petroleum refineries to transform the crude oil into useful products such as liquefied petroleum gas gasoline or petrol, kerosene, jet fuel, diesel oil, and fuel oils. All refineries have atmospheric distillation units, while 
more complex refineries may have both vacuum distillation unit. Inside the distillation unit, the liquid and vapors separate into petroleum components called fractions according to their boiling points. The last part for the discussion, is there any other type of chromatography technique other than TLC? So, the answer is yes, there are two main types of chromatography, which is liquid chromatography and gas chromatography. Gas chromatography is an ideal in any scenario that needs to separate volatile mixture and it is undoubtedly one of the key techniques used for screening or identification or quantification of many groups of nonpolar and semipolar. For gas chromatography, the mobile phase is an inert gas and the stationary phase is a microscopic layer of viscous liquid on a surface of solid particles on an inert solid support inside a piece of glass or metal tubing called a column. So that's all from our group. Thank you. Welcome back to Lab Rats Show. It's me again, Nisha Ismari, your favorite host. And today we have two special guests, Professor Nadila and Professor Nabila. Please introduce yourself. Thank you, Professor Nisha, and Assalamualaikum. My name is Nadila Bintia. Hello, everyone. My name is Prof. Nabila, and I will explain to you some steps for this experiment. Before we get started, I would like to remind you guys to wear a laboratory coat to protect your clothing. Please wear gloves and close your shoes to avoid direct contact from chemical spills. Professor Nadila, the stage is yours. Alright, so I'm going to explain for liquid liquid extraction. For that, what is liquid liquid extraction? It's basically a process where separating, you're separating an organic compound from an aqueous solution or suspension. The most common solvent is for this process is either an ether or dichloromethane. These both liquid have widely different densities with respect to waters. First of all, for the procedure, we have to label, we have to pass, we have to label each of the flasks with acid, base and neutral. And in the laboratory, the scorner, the assistant will provide us with three compounds of acid, base and neutral. We have to put each compound with it 0.2 gram in each class accordingly and for the class after that we have to add up 10 ml of the chloromethane and we spray the class gently until there is no like there's no this soft sample there's no this soft sample visible all right i'm going to explain for the liquid liquid extraction part so first of all we have to level a three plus which is for acid, base, and neutral, and under the one, which is the mixture flask. And before starting, we have to weigh 0.2 gram of each compound of acid, base, and neutral, and fold it into mixture flask, and add up 10 ml of the chloromethane. Spray gently until there is no any of sample or solution visible. And after that, we have to set up a separate funnel. And while doing so, we have to make sure it stands properly on the retort stand and put it in the rain while it looks stable. Okay, so we're going to start for the acid. For the acid, in the acid class, the mixture of acid, we're going to add 10 ml of 5% sodium hydroxide. And we're going to put it in spray the funnel. We have to take it up, spray the funnel, shake it. And once in a while, we have to vent out the gas to let out the vapor pressure and why do so we have to make sure we not point out to other people's faces this might be flashy or might make misses so after that we're going to let our, our put it back the spread funnel in the ring and put we with a white until just like two layers separating layers look we're going to see this like the visible color of two layers for the bottom we know that it's a dichloromethane and for the top it's easy so we have to let out the bottom layer by opening the stop clock. Oh, so for the part we have to make sure to stop close the stop clock before doing anything before adding the mixture. So for now, 
to straighten the bottom layer, you have to open the top cloth. So let it out the gravity in a major flask. While the top layer, you have to let it out into the acid flask. We're going to repeat the process second time to make sure to minimize to maximize the molecule of the acid. Before that, after that, we have to settle first for the acid, and we have we only have the acid in the acid flask. We're going to put it aside, and for the mixture flask, we're going to do it again, but for extract the base. Thank you, Professor Nadila. Now we will proceed to recrystallization, and I'm very sure that you guys are so excited. So let's get started. But before that, make sure to wear gloves to avoid any direct contact with the acid, base, or any other substance that can affect our skin. First of all, we need to add half of dry acid precipitate in a flask, which is a single solvent flask, and another half into another flask, which is a mixed solvent flask. Remember, Use Erlenmeyer flask and not beaker for recrystallization. If there is spills of acid or base on your skin during the experiment, it should be washed immediately with large amount of cold water. Then, we will add 5 ml of methanol and water into mixed solvent flask and 5 ml of hexane into a single solvent flask. But remember that hexane is very flammable, so keep it away from flames. After that, we need to heat up both flasks until they boil. Then we left both flasks to cool at room temperature and observe it. After that, for mixed solvent flask, we have to immerse it in an ice water bath and observe the change after a few minutes. Last step is to vacuum filter the crystal and let it dry for melting point and TLC experiment. I know that this is too much for you guys, but let's proceed to the sublimation of the neutral compound experiment. Firstly, we need to observe the neutral flask and some dry crystal should be seen. Then place the flask on a hot plate, then fill some ice into the test tube, wipe the condensation on the outer surface of the test tube, and clamp it to suspend it inside the opening of the flask. By using the hot plate, warm the bottom of the flask. Any moisture on the bottom of the test tube should be wiped off. After a few minutes, crystals of the compound will appear on the bottom of the test tube. Continue until most of the compound has sublimed. Determine the melting point and identify the neutral compound and hand in a sample for grading. The melting point of the chamfer and naphthalene are 178 degrees Celsius. Lastly, scrap the crystal and save it for the TLC experiment that will further explain by Professor Nabila. Thank you, Prof. Michelle, for the great explanation. Wow, our today's discussion is very interesting. Okay, so now without further ado, I will take part for the next section, which is melting point determination. The melting point is a criterion of purity for solid compounds. In general, a pure compound usually has a sharp melting point, whereas an impure substance has an indefinite melting point, and therefore they will melt over a range of several degrees. In this session, we will play with acid, therefore I would remind to all of you to be careful with that. If any corrosive chemicals gets on your skin or clothes, immediately go and wash the affected area with large quantities of water. First, we will crush a small amount of fresh acid, which is benzoic acid and base, which is a p-chloroaniline on a piece of filter paper. Next, fill the melting point tube with a few milligrams of sample by pushing the open end through the crushed material and tapping it down to the closed end. One tube for acid, one tube for base, and one tube for the acid-base mixture. For the mixture, before inserting the sample into the tube, we need to mix it first. Uh, then, please repeat the process for your uh, isolated acid and mix. For the next step, set the melting point apparatus to tube temperature to 55 degrees Celsius. Start the heating by carefully inserting the melting tube into the apparatus. When the temperature is reached, the machine will be and then start the temperature ramping process and carefully observe through the eyepiece. In this step, there is one precaution. If you break your thermometer, collect the broken pieces and spill mercury in a beaker and take it to chemical storeroom for disposal. Please avoid direct contact with mercury from broken thermometers. For the next step, we need to determine the melting point of the compound when the sample melts and record the melting point as a bridge. For example, the temperature at which liquid first appears and the temperature at which the last portion of solid disappears. Finally, stop the heating once all the melting points are obtained and recorded. 
fois et so tiring. But it's okay, we will better discuss the next session which is the LC experiment. Stands for the layer chromatography. First, we will dissolve a small amount of each nerd acid and base and neutral compound in 5 ml dichromate. Repeat with your isolated acid, base and neutral compound. Next, we prepare 10 ml 2 developing solvent in the flask. First, mix hexane with ethanol by ratio 9 to 1 and second, dichloromethane and hexane by ratio 9 to 1. For your information, because dichloromethane is toxic, avoid breathing vapor and avoid contact with skin or eyes and hexane is very flammable. Please keep it away from lips. Next, fill the developing chamber with 5 ml of each developing solvent. Label the chamber appropriately, close the lid to saturate the solvent vapor and prevent it from evaporating. After that, obtain two silica gel TLC plates with uh, fluorescent indicators, one for the non sample and one for the isolated sample. Mark a horizontal line with a pencil about 1 cm for the plate's bottom and 1 cm from its top. We need to use pencil this time so that the ink of the pen will not affect our experiment result. Next, using a capillary tube, place all three of your known sample solutions on the pencil line. For each sample application, use a clean capillary UK. Repeat the spotting for your isolated acid, base, and neutral compound. After that, in the developing chamber, Place the spotted TLC plate and allow the solvent to rise to uh, within 1 cm of the plate stock. Then, um, remove the plate and set it aside to dry. To visualize the components, use a shark with ultraviolet light source and a pencil to outline each spot. Calculate RF values by measuring the distance traveled by each component in relation to the solvent front. Um, using the short wave ultraviolet, avoid, com uh, avoid coming into direct contact with UV light on your skin or in your eyes. Wear gloves and use a UV protective shield such as um, a plastic panel uh, when working with it. Finally, the last step is determine the tentative identity of your unknown based on uh, similar RL values and record it in your notebook. That's all from me. Now, I will pass the floor to our host, Prof. Nisha. Thank you, Professor Nabila, for the wonderful explanation. So now let's move on to the discussion section. For the first discussion is, Professor Nabila, can you give one example on how extraction process is carried out in the industry and mention the type of extraction equipment used and the idea behind the process? One example on how extraction process is carried out in the industry is separation of components with similar boiling point. For example, separating aromatic from hydrocarbon. Various types of mixer, centrifugal, extractor, and column are used at extraction apparatus. All of them add the light piece at the bottom of the column um, and the heavy piece is removed from the top. The density difference uh, causes the light piece to rise through the heavy piece and affect the mass transfer between the two pieces. Hence, the separation process happened. Uh, thank you for a good explanation, Prof. Nabila. So now, I would like to ask Prof. Nisha um, about what is the difference between the distillation process that you have done in the laboratory um, and the distillation process um, in petroleum refinery. And can give you, uh, can you give me some ideas um, and the process behind the petroleum refinery distillation? First of all, petroleum refining processes are the chemical engineering processes and other facilities used in petroleum refineries to transform crude oil into useful products such as liquefied petroleum gas, gasoline, and petrol. Refineries are very large industrial complexes that involve many different processing units and auxiliary facilities that, such as utility units and storage tanks. Each refinery has its own unit arrangement and combination of refining processes largely determined by the refinery location, desired products, and economic considerations. Most methods of distillation used by industry and in laboratory research are variation of simple distillation. This basic operation requires the use of a retort in which liquid is heated, a condenser to cool the vapor and a receiver to collect the distillate. In heating a mixture of substances, the most volatile and the lowest boiling distills first and the others subsequently or not at all. This simple apparatus is entirely satisfactory for the purification of a liquid containing non-volatile material and is reasonably adequate for the separating liquids of quite divergent boiling points. 
For laboratory use, the apparatus is commonly made of glass and connected with cords, rubber bungs, or ground glass joints. For industrial applications, larger equipment of metal or ceramic is employed. Obviously, the refineries are much more expensive than the distillations. For our last discussion for today, Professor Nabila, is there any other type of chromatography technique other than the LC that can be used to identify the unknown? Chromatography has become widely accepted in laboratories around the world as an effective analytical technique that separates mixed compounds into their individual compounds. While this method is so accurate, there are primarily four different types of chromatography, which is gas chromatography, high performance liquid chromatography, thin layer chromatography, and paper chromatography. Each has its uh, own advantage and benefits in several industries, from healthcare to forensic science. In paper chromatography, support material consists of a layer of cellulose highly saturated with water. In this method, a tea filter paper comprised to form the support and water drops centered in its pores made up the stationary liquid phase. Mobile phase consists of an appropriate fluid placed in the developing tank. Paper chromatography is a liquid liquid chromatography. That's all for today's episode. Thank you for joining our show for today. See you guys next time in LabRats Show. Bye! Liquid-liquid extraction is the method to separate compound from mixture. In this experiment, we mix acid, base and neutral compound together in an organic solvent then proceeded to perform liquid-liquid extraction to get them separated again. Firstly, we must put on gloves. Make sure it fits our hands right to prevent slipping and tearing. Next, we must label the small opening flask with acid, base, neutral and the wide opening flask with mixture. This is to avoid mistakes when performing the extraction. Then, we weighed 0.2 gram for acid, base and neutral. Although we didn't know which was which as they were labelled A, B and C, we must use separate spatula and weighing boat for each of them to prevent contamination. Place them into the mixture flask and then use a dropper and measuring cylinder to add 10 ml of dichloromethane to dissolve them. After preparing the mixture, we clamp the separatory funnel to the retort stand securely while being mindful not to apply too much pressure on it that will cause breakage. We close the stopcock before we add in the mixture into the separatory funnel. We extracted acid from the mixture by adding 10 ml of 5% sodium hydroxide solution into the separatory funnel. Then, we shake it vigorously several times and we point the end of the separatory funnel in the direction away from ourselves before opening the stopcock to release the pressure. We close the stopcock again and we place the separatory funnel on the retort stand securely. We observe a defined interface between two layers before starting the separation process. Through our knowledge on density, we understood that the top layer is the layer containing extracted acid sample and the one below is the mixture. Separation of the layer is done by placing the mixture flask under the clamp separatory funnel, removing the separatory funnel's cover to avoid air bubbles in the funnel and carefully opening the stopcock. We closed the stopcock when we saw the visible interface line of two layers is at the minuscule of the separatory funnel. The aqueous sodium hydroxide is then poured from the top of the separatory funnel into the acid flask. We repeated the entire process again by pouring the dichloromethane layer back into the separatory funnel then adding fresh 10 ml of 5% sodium hydroxide solution into it, shaking vigorously and venting out the pressure. This is to ensure efficient extraction of aqueous extracts containing acid of the sodium salt from the mixture. Liquid-liquid extraction of base is done by pouring the mixture into a fresh separatory funnel with closed top cock, then adding 10 ml of 5% hydrochloric acid into it. We shake the separatory funnel vigorously, then vent out the pressure by opening the stop cock. The fine line indicating the interface of the two layers is observed before placing the mixture flask under the clamped separatory funnel. We remove the separatory funnel cover to avoid air bubbles in the funnel and carefully opening the stop cock. Stop cock is Close when the visible interface line of the two layers is at the minuscule of the separatory funnel. The aqueous hydrochloric acid extracts is then poured from the top of the separatory funnel into the base flask.
to increase the extraction efficiency, we repeated the entire process again by pouring the dichloromethane layer back into the separatory funnel, then adding fresh 10 ml of 5% hydrochloric acid solution into it. We shake it vigorously and vent out the pressure. However, this time we placed the neutral flask under the separatory funnel before opening the stopcock. The solution in the base flask contains the base of the hydrochloride salt. The liquid-liquid extraction of base is followed by the distillation process. The distillation process began by basifying the hydrochloric acid extracts in the base flask by adding 15 ml of 10% sodium hydroxide solution. We allowed the mixture to cool to room temperature before adding it to a clean 60 ml separatory funnel. Then, the base flask is rinsed twice with dichloromethane, 5 ml each time, and we add the rinses to the separatory funnel. We place the stopper on the separatory funnel before shaking vigorously. We allow the layers to separate and run off the bottom layer, the dichloromethane, into empty base flask. The extraction of the aqueous layer is repeated once more with 10 ml of dichloromethane. We rinse off the dichloromethane layers and combine them into base flask. The base flask now contains the organic base in the dichloromethane solution. We ran the dichloromethane layer into a clean Erlenmeyer flask. We dry it over anhydrous sodium sulfate and filter it by gravity into a clean 50 ml round bottom flask. Then, we add boiling stones into round bottom flask to prevent superheating from occurring. The dichloromethane is removed by distillation using the distillation unit. The distillation unit composed of heating mantle, condenser, three-way adapter, distillation outlet and beaker. We put our round bottom flask inside of the heating mantle and place the three-way adapter to connect the condenser with the round bottom flask opening. The distillation unit shall make the dichloromethane vaporize. As we heat the round bottom flask in the heating mantle, the dichloromethane will vaporize and flow into the condenser. We use cat clip to secure the connecting points in the distillation unit because we know that the boiling point of dichloromethane is 40 degrees Celsius. A thermometer is placed in the three-way adapter to allow us to monitor the change in temperature and prevent us from overheating the sample. The condenser is run with cold water on the sides of it from the bottom to the top to prevent air pockets. This makes the dichloromethane vapor condense and become droplet. The dichloromethane droplets will be catched by a beaker placed at the end of the distillation outlet connected at the end of the condenser. We observe as the temperature rises to 40 degrees Celsius, temperature at which bulk of the liquid distills. When no more drops of liquid falls into the receiving beaker, the distillation process is complete. The base is the residue in the rambutan flask. My groupmate Masha shall be the one explaining the procedures that follows. Here you go, Masha. Thank you, Iwana. Hi, I'm Masha. I'll now go over the experiment we ran on the sublimation of the neutral compound. Sublimation is the conversion between the solid and the gaseous phases of matter with no intermediate liquid stage. For those of us interested in the water cycle, sublimation is most often used to describe the process of snow and ice changing into water vapor in the air without first melting into water. So in this experiment, the first thing we did was to get a neutral flask from the liquid liquid extraction ready and we place it on top of the hot plate. We switch on the hot plate and we have to wait until the vapor evaporates before we can put in the test tube. Okay, but before that, we have to fill the test tube with ice cold water and clamp it using the hot stand before we suspend it inside the opening of the flask. Um, we have to wipe the condensation on the upper surface of the test tube before we can put it inside the flask because too much condensation may wash off the crystals from the test tube. So, uh, if you can see this slide, there is some crystals at the bottom of the tube. This is actually the result of sublimation when the vapor from the heated flask meets the cold test tube, it will sublime and it will turn solid straight away. Next is recrystallization experiment. The purpose of this experiment is to study how an impure solid can be purified by recrystallization. So, we prepared two flasks for this experiment and designated them as mixed solid flask and single solid flask. 
substance A is added 0.5 grams in each flask and then we pour 2.5 ml ethanol and 2.5 ml water into the mixed solar flask and 5 ml hexane into the single solar flask. The two flasks were placed on top of a hot plate and heated to boiling. But we repeat this step by adding 13 ml of hexane into the flask because we took too much time before putting the flask on the hot plate. So the hexane evaporates into the air and did not dissolve the substance. Um, and then we let the flask to cool at room temperature after they have boiled. But for mixed solar flask, we immerse it in water bath and wait until the crystal form. This is the results for single solvent. You can see there is long line crystals. Uh, this is because the solvent crystallizes atom by atom. So different solvents will give different pattern of crystals. Uh, for a perfect crystal, we must select a suitable solvent for the substance. And this is the result for our mix solvent flask. For our mix solvent flask, it took longer time for the crystal to form. And at first, we thought we have failed, but crystallization is based on saturation level. Thus, the crystal may form better if it is much cooler. And for the last step of recrystallization, we have to do vacuum filtration for the single solar flask. Vacuum filtration is the standard technique used for separating a solid liquid mixture when the goal is to retain the solid. Solid liquid mixture is poured into uh, onto a filter paper. Uh, vacuum filtration is much faster than gravity filtration, often taking less than one minute with good seals and good vacuum. For this step, we combine our crystals from every group because we don't have that much time to do it group by group. So this is the device that we use. Um, first, we put in filter paper and if you can see, there is like a holder and a filter paper. So we cut it like that so it is easier for us to pull it out from the vacuum. And we put two filter papers to prevent leaking. And then after that, we pour a little bit of distilled water to stick the filter paper to the vacuum and then in our single solvent flask too before we swirl it gently to mix. And then after that, we pour our sample from the flask into the vacuum. And this is the result. As you can see, uh, the pure crystal on the filter paper. That is all from me. Next, I'll pass to get this. Marsha, I'll be taking it from here. Okay, so for thin layer chromatography, we first started by taking compound A, B, and C and dissolving each of them in 5 ml dichloromethane or DCM. Then, we prepared our developing solvents by using hexane and ethanol on 9 to 1 ratio, and then using dichloromethane and hexane on a 9 to 1 ratio, both in a different flask at 10 ml. And next, we will take the silica gel TLC plate and we will mark 1 cm from the top and bottom for our for both TLC plates. And then we label the developing chamber and place 5 ml of each solvent, developing solvents inside the chamber. Make sure to close the developing chamber to prevent the DCM from evaporating into the air. On the silica gel TLC plate, we will mark A, B, and C for each of those plates. Now, take your capillary tubes, break them in half if they're too long, then you can use them to spot your TLC plates. We made sure to use different capillary tubes every time we took a different compound just to prevent contamination. Then, we use a technique called spotting where we will take a capillary tube and take a sample of each of those compounds and just spot them or drop them this small tiny dot on the plates. Now when you're done with the spotting, put them inside the label developing chamber. Now inside the developing chamber you need to keep an eye on it just to make sure that the developing solvent does not rise up inside the silica gel TLC plate up to the top line. When it's about to reach a top line, make sure you take out your TLC silica gel plate as fast as you could. Once we remove our plate, we put them on the shortwave ultraviolet light 
to use the fluorescent indicator to show us where has the compound traveled inside the TLC silica gel plate. As you can see, at C, the compound has flown off the TLC silica gel plate, that means it moves very fast. And for this, we will use something called an retention factor to determine which compound moved the furthest. Here's the distance that the compound has traveled. And here's the RF values that we have calculated. And as we can see, at hexane and ethanol uh, TLC silica gel plate, we can see that compound B's RF value is 0.64. Now at hexane and ethanol, we can see that compound C with our value of 0.86 has traveled the furthest. So, we will move on to discussion now. Here's the first question. So, some of the safety precautions that we use is that we always make sure to wear gloves during our experiment, especially when handling the separatory funnel, just in case that the chemical might spill out of the funnel and onto our hands. For the next one, we made sure to always put a base underneath the funnel or tubes or flasks that we use to prevent it from spilling onto the table or onto us when we're handling the apparatus. For the third one, always make sure to close the separatory funnel when not in use because then the chemical inside will evaporate into the air. We made sure to always change the capillary tubes every time we took a different compound because if not, then all the compounds will be contaminated and we won't get accurate results. For the fourth one, we always make sure not to clamp the separatory funnel too tight or then it will break and all the chemicals will spill onto the table. We always make sure to use uh, the assigned spatula for each chemicals to prevent contamination with our substances. During liquid to liquid extraction, we always make sure to swirl the floss slowly to prevent the powder from going all over the floss and if, if not, you will get inaccurate results. During precipitation, make sure to put the flask quickly onto the hot plate because then the DCM will evaporate into the air. Now we will move to the second part of the discussion. One example of extraction used in industry is oil extraction. In oil extraction process, we will do something called solvent extraction where we will remove the sol solute part of a solid by using a liquid solvent. It is commonly referred to as leaching or solid liquid extraction. And one of the most commonly used compounds in this process is the N-hexane compound because it yields more oil than any other solvents. In this process, something called the solid extractor is used to extract the oil. Solid extractor is made out of the three parts. One is the percolator that circulates the solvent. Two is the thimble, which is used to hold a solid compound. Second one is a thimble. It is used to hold the solid that needs to be extracted. Second one is a thimble. It is used to hold the solid that will go through the extraction process. And the next one is a siphon mechanism that will constantly empty out the thimble from time to time. The solvent, usually ethanol, is heated to temperature beyond 78 degrees Celsius, which is beyond its boiling point during the solid extraction process. The evaporated ethanol is then confined within the apparatus by a condenser unit. But just to be safe to prevent the ethanol from escaping, we should always put this device 
underneath a fume hood. A fume hood. Now moving on to the next part of the discussion for question 3. For the ones we did in the lab, the process is fairly simple where it is used to only act, to only distill one single compound. Whereas in the petroleum refinery industry, for petroleum industry, they use the concept of boiling point to determine which product that they want from the crude oil. So the crude oil will go inside the distillation unit and it will be heated up to high temperatures. So at the top of the unit, usually be the one, usually be the compound that is that has the lowest boiling point, and it will be in vapor form at the top. Usually something for butane or lighter products, and at the bottom, it will usually be products that they will use for higher temperatures because it has higher boiling point, so they do not want it to burn to be easily flammable. Now, for the last part of the discussion here, we will talk about other types of chromatography such as gas chromatography, high performance liquid chromatography, and paper chromatography. Liquid chromatography uses a solvent as its mobile phase. It, it pushes the machine using a high pressure pump. Liquid chromatography works by a liquid sample is injected into a stream of solve into a stream of solvent flowing through a column packed with a separation medium which is also acts as the stationary phase. The liquid sample is injected into a stream of solvent, which is the mobile phase, into a column packed with separation medium which acts as the stationary phase. Then these components they will separate layer by layer they move out to the, to the column. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and hi, my name is Hamai Mashaal bin Hamamilin and today me and my group mates, Yana and also Erdina, we are going to talk about the experiment that we did with Dr. Wan Fazli, which is experiment one and two. The experiment where we identify, we separate and we extract organic compounds. So, uh, why do actually, why did we do the experiment? We did this is because we want to familiarize with the technique to separate, to identify, and to extract organic, different and unknown organic compounds. So, uh, in this experiment, we we are going to explain it into three different parts. Where the first part is about liquid liquid extraction, which will be explained by Faraliana, and the second part is about recrystallization, where in this part, Erdina will explain things about this. And the last part is thin layer chromatography, where I, Ham Ayman, will be explaining it about later, late in this presentation. So, yeah, without further ado, I'll pass it to Faraliana. Thank you Ham, my name is Farayana and I will explain the liquid-liquid extraction process. Starting with the objective of this process, it is a separation process to separate mixture of compounds from an aqueous solution. The first step of this experiment is to label our flask by the four different compounds which are acid, base, neutral and mixture. Next, we should weigh and add the compounds separately into the designated flask which means that we should add 0.2 gram of each compound of base, neutral and acid into the mixture flask and it should be noted that for each compound we should use a different spatula and weighting boat to avoid contamination. The next step is to add in 10 ml of DCM and it should be swirled gently in order for it to dissolve and the first compound that we will extract from this mixture is the acid. So for the extraction of acid, we shall add in 10 ml of 5% sodium hydroxide solution into the mixture flask. And now the context we have in this mixture flask, we shall add it into the separatory funnel and be shaken vigorously for several times in order for the chemicals 
at the compound to react with each other. And it should be noted that during this process, we should open the stopcock to release the some pressure by two or three times. Once it is shaken, we will place it upright in the iron ring and open the stopcock in order for the layers to separate. After waiting for a few seconds, two layers can be observed and we can know which is which based on their density. So for the bottom layer, we have a mixture of TCM, base and neutral. Well, on the top layer, we have the acid in the aqueous base form. So thus, the top layer is our acid compound. And we will repeat this step once again for it to be completely extracted from the mixture. And then the top layer will be added into the acid flask, while the bottom layer will be added back into the mixture flask. For the extraction of base, the steps are similar to the extraction of acid but instead of sodium hydroxide being added, we are going to add hydrochloric acid to add as an aqueous acid for the base. So it will be added into the separatory funnel, uh, the same for acid and be shaken vigorously. But for this layer, the bottom layer we have is a mixture of neutral and DCM while the top layer is hydrochloric acid with base. And with the same as extraction of acid, this will be repeated once more in order for it to be extracted more. And the top layer will be added into the base flask and put aside for the distillation process, while the bottom layer will be put back into the mixture flask. In our mixture flask, we have a mixture of DCM and neutral. For the neutral extraction, we will add in water and the steps are repeated by using a separatory funnel and be shaken vigorously. But for now, the two layers we have is uh, the top layer is an aqueous that we will not use, so we can just discard it. And for the bottom layer, we will then put it back into the neutral flask. And this neutral flask, we will leave it aside for sublimation process. Before going on into the distillation process, now in our base flask, we have HCl with base. And now we don't want the HCl, so we basify the HCl by adding 10% of now. And based on the picture we have, we can see that the components in the flask have turned cloudy. Then, after that, we rinse the base flask with DCM. So we repeat the extraction process once more by adding it into the separatory funnel and shaking it vigorously and allow the layers to separate. So the bottom layer we have now is DCM together with base. We will repeat the extraction once more with water and we put it into the base flask and now in the base flask we have water DCM together with base. For the distillation process, we don't want the base flask to be with water. So for the water to be removed, we add in an anhydrous sodium sulfate, which is our drying agent. And we add like one scoop of that and we can see after a few seconds, there's a white clump to be formed at the bottom of the flask. And now we have this flask, we will filter it into a round bottle flask to be put inside for the distillation process. Just now, we have our round bottom flask which consists of DCM and base. And then we will add in boiling stones for it to prevent from superheating during this process. And we will put it in on top of the steam bath and set up the apparatus carefully with clamps in order for it to not move and stay static. After it is set on the steam bath, we shall wait and observe at which temperature the bulk of the liquid will distill, which is observed to be at 40 degrees Celsius. So now, uh, until there is no more left liquid falling into the flask, we can remove the round bottom flask and in the flask is our base residue. And I will pass on to Dina for the next process. Thank you Liana for the presentation. Hi and assalamualaikum everyone. My name is Irina. The process of extraction and distillation is well explained by Liana. Now I will continue with the next step which is recrystallization. A separation method I would like to explain is the recrystallization process. 
Recrystallization is a process where a liquid substance is solidified into a highly structured solid of a crystal lattice. We use the precipitate of acid that is obtained from precipitation method to get the pure crystals of acid by recrystallization. First and foremost, we have to label two flasks as shown in the diagram. One is labeled as single solvent and another one is mixed solvent. In the single solvent flask, half of dried acid precipitate and 5 ml of hexane is added. In the mixed solvent flask, add another half of dried acid precipitate along with 2.5 ml of water and 2.5 ml of ethanol. During this step, we have to use separate droppers to prevent contamination. As shown in the picture, we need to heat up both flasks on a hot plate until they boil. For safety precaution, we cannot smell the compound when it is heated. Both flasks were left to cool at room temperature and is being observed. Next, we put another 10 ml of ethanol to the mixed solvent flask and is left for observation. Then the mixed solvent flask is placed in ice water bath and is also left for observation. After our observation, the single solvent flask have crystals appeared, but not for mixed solvent flask. There are two possibilities, whether the solvent added is too much and the mixture is diluted or the dried precipitate added is too little, hence the crystals did not appear. Lastly, the crystals are filtered using vacuum filtration and dried for TLC experiment. These two flasks formed white crystals at different temperatures because the solvents have different coefficients. For safety precaution, we cannot throw filter paper directly into the sink. The last method I'm going to explain is sublimation of neutral compounds. Sublimation is where a substance directly changes from solid state to gas state. This process is done by using neutral compound. Based on our observation, dried crystals were seen in a neutral flask. Then, it is placed on a hot plate. Next, we have to fill a test tube with some ice and wipe the condensation on the outer surface of the test tube. The purpose of the ice is to make sure the outer surface is cold. Clamp the test tube with a retort stand so it is suspended at the opening of the flask as shown in the picture. Once again, any moisture that appears on the outer surface needs to be wiped off. After a few minutes, crystals at the bottom will turn into gas and be deposited at the outer surface of the test tube. The process is continued until most of it is sublimed. Last but not least, we need to scrap the crystals and save them in petri dishes for a TLC experiment that will be further explained by Ham. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and hi, my name is Ham Ayman Shawal bin Ham Amidin. And today I'll be continuing what Erdina and Yana finished discuss this now, which I'll be continuing the last part of the experiment, which is uh, about TLC or we can call it as thin layer chromatography. So before we get deeper into this discussion, I would like to explain what thin layer chromatography is. So thin layer chromatography is a type of column chromatography where people use to identify random and unknown compounds that is either neutral, base or even acid. So how does this chromatography work, this thin layer chromatography? So this thin layer chromatography will be using a fluorescent plate like this or like the diagram beside me shows. Uh, so this this is how we do it. We underline, we make it a line uh, on top and the bottom of the paper, one cm further from the end or the bottom or top of the paper. And then we will label it with three different compounds, A, B, C. All of them are unknown. So how can we measure things up? So firstly, after we have uh, those three tubes, we will be needing to put some droplets onto the plate where we will uh, label into three, three solvent, I mean three labeling, which A, B, C. Then we will put some drops where we unknown compounds, it might be neutral, that acid or base. And then we'll be using the developing chamber. So what is developing chamber? This developing chamber is used to soak in those TLC plates will be we will be needing to use for later in the experiment. So for this developing chamber, we will be needing two. We need to prepare two developing chambers. Which one will we will need to mix it, mix dichloromethane and also hexane into one chamber with a nine to one ratio. Where in this case we used a five microliters of the solution or the solvent. So 4.5 uh, microliters are from the dichloromethane part and 0 0.5 is from the hexane part. Same goes to the another developing chamber which we will be mixing it with uh, hexane and ethanol. That is also we've been using a 9 to 1 ratio. So after mixing 
those two solvents solution into which become solvents we will then be need, we need to soak in this TLC plates into the into the development chamber and let let it submerge fully until it hits the top line of the plate as i mentioned before the 1 cm line on top of the paper so then after that we will need to take it out and let it dry aside we then will be using a uv light in this case, we'll be using a short wave since uh, we are using an, an experiment which doesn't need that much UV light. Doesn't we don't need that huge amount of wavelength? So we decided we decided to use the short wave one. And since, as you can see the diagram, we cover the UV light and the TLC plate under a glass so that the UV light it doesn't radiate too much UV light onto us because. Uh, UV light can cause us cancer, so that's why we use glass. So then, uh, we use the UV light, and then this plate will glow up in green, which then we can see how far each co compound goes onto the plate from the solvent. And then after we have seen each compound, how far each compound goes, we can label the outlines of the compounds of these two TLC plates and then we can move on to the next, the last part where we are going to calculate the retention factor of each compound. So how do we calculate this? So re the retention factor is based on B over A where A is the length of the solvent and B is the length of how far a compound goes from the starting point of the solvent. So based on the diagram I have shown in this slide, I have calculated each and every one of the compound for both of the TLC plates. So after calculating all that, we finally can know, uh, we can see how far the distance travel of a compound from the starting point of solvent. So because of that, we can finally identify which compound is neutral, base and acid. For discussion number two, the question asks for an example of extraction process to be carried out. The example I want to explain is extraction of coffee for the production of soluble coffee. The equipment used is a coffee extractor machine. They are fully automated. It enables to program of time, duration of the cycle, pressure and temperature. The first step is coarsely ground the coffee beans. Then filter column must be used. Next, the process is run semi-continuously with water flowing in a counter-current flow to the coffee. The system must be kept under pressure. Next, a batch of ground coffee is extracted from the extractor machine. Finally, used coffee grounds are discharged. For discussion number three, it is asked, what is the differences between the distillation process we have performed in the laboratory and the distillation process in petroleum refinery? So based on these pictures we have, we can see that the differences we have is between the apparatus. For the distillation process we performed in the lab, it has much more simple apparatus with just two flasks, a thermometer and also a steam bath. But for the petroleum refinery, the crude oil is one of the examples for the fractional distillation that goes through in the petroleum industry. So it needs to have a furnace for it to be heated up and it also needs the fractionating columns. So the petroleum, they use a lot more complex apparatus than the one we used in the lab. Now we will get into the idea and the process behind the petroleum refinery distillation. So as I mentioned just now, we have this crude oil distillation and it goes through fractional distillation. What is it meant by fractional distillation? So for this process, it's actually a heating up of a mixture of liquids that have different boiling points, which in our case is the crude oil, before separating them by cooling. Thus, why is distillation process important in this petroleum industry? As we can see from this picture, it is actually important to perform the initial separation of this crude oil into intermediate products, which will then undergo further processing in downstream units for the quality to be better according to the market standard. Now I'll pass on to Ham for discussion number four. So, now I'll be discussing about question number four in the discussion part where it is uh, the question is about is there any other type of chromatography technique 
other than thin layer chromatography? So the answer is yes. So one of it is gas chromatography or specifically known as GLPC, gas liquid partition chromatography. Where in this chro gas chromatography, it's, it's all about gas and liquid where it relies on the difference in behavior of the mobile gas phase and also the stationary liquid phase. So how does this gas chromatography works? So at first, we will be, we will be needing to, to prepare a liquid sample, which then this liquid sample will be injected into the gas chromatography or the gas cylinder, where this is where the liquid will be vap vaporized from time to time. It will convert into gas, which then this gas will go through a flow of coil, or as you can see from the diagram, the number four, the column coil. And then after it goes through all the column place, uh, it will meet the detector, where in this detector is when we record all the amount of sample heating into the detector, and finally, it will go through the chromatogram. This chromatogram is where we detect or we identify or we separate the samples, the liquid samples and identify what kind of liquid sample is it through the technology of the PC. So I think that is all from me. Thank you and Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. My name is Abdullah Nidal bin Nafi alayas Hanafi and my matric number is 2113597 and I'm from group 1. Today I will be presenting the topic separation, purification and identification of organic compound. Through the process of purify the organic compound, in this experiment there is a many type, many technique of to through the acid based separation and in this experiment we will specify in the in the technique of liquid liquid extraction. In this liquid liquid extraction, we can separate the mixture solution, mixture organic compound, into a three classes which are acid, base, and neutral solution compound. The first step is that we need to label down the flask into an acid, acid flask, base flask, neutral flask, and also mixture flask. Next, we weigh 0.2 gram of acid, base, neutral separately. Note that we need to use the spatula and weighing board separately to prevent the contamination. Here you can see in the first front, in this front is there is a acid organic compound, base compound, and neutral compound. After that, we add them into a shake flask and dissolve them with a 10 ml of the dichromatin. We need to swell it gently during the dissolution process and ensure that there is no undissolved sample visible. To prepare for the extraction and solution of the acid, we need to stand the spiratory funnel with a retort stand. Basically, to extract the acid from the mixture solution, we need to add 5% of 10 ml now, or we call it sodium hydroxide solution, into the funnel. After that, we shake it vigorously and then we vent up the, the gases or we call it release the pressure occasionally by facing it toward the other, to the, the empty space, not toward the, the pupil. And then, note that we need to use the glove here. Next, we place the funnel upright into the iron ring and then we wait it until it can we can see that there is a two interface visible after that it can be separated from the dichromethane we uh, in this experiment we use the dichromethane for the dichromethane it has higher density than the solution so that's mean it is at the below here we can see in the picture as at the below on this one so we can flush this down into the mixture flask and let the aqueous sodium hydroxide solution into the acid flask the process of extraction acid need to be repeated for the extraction to improve the extraction efficacy. So like what I said uh, earlier that first uh, from the mixture flask, we add them again with the with the 5% of 10 ml of now into the respiratory funnel and then we shake it, shake it vigorously until we can see the visible interface between both of them and then we pour, we flush it down uh, for the dichromethane on the below part into the mixture flask and let the upper part which is the aqueous extract into the acid flask. Now the acid flask is now the sodium, so the sodium salt of the acid. Next, for the preparation to isolate an extract base, we need to add the dichromethane layer from the mixture flask 
with a 5% of 10 ml of hydrochloric acid. Now that we need to use the glow so that it can prevent the acid from coming in contact with our hand. And then, like what I told before, we shake it uh, into in the spiratory funnel, we shake it vigorously, and then we vent up the build, the build up gas occasionally at least four times. And after that, we put it into the iron ring and let them become the visible uh, two interface parts. And then we flush down the dichromate layers at the below part into the mixture flask. And then from the upper part, which is the hard, uh, hydrochloride egg extract, into the base flask. To improve the extraction efficacy, we need to repeat it, the process twice so that we add them again from the mixture flask, we add them again with the 5% of 10ml hydrochloric acid and then we shake it vigorously in the spiratory funnel and then we, we vent the build out gas occasionally at least 4 times and then need note that when we release the pressure, we need to face opposite of the people so that it can prevent them from coming in contact with them and then from the after the layers have been separated the below part is the diagram uh, the below part need to be run off into the neutral flask since it is a neutral organic now and then from the upper part is the hydrochloric extract which is uh, the base we put them into the base flask going further with the distillation process for the base we can basify the hydrochloric acid extract from the base flask with a 50 ml of 10 percentage now sodium hydroxide solution to that now we can see that there is a white cloudy solution in the base flask in order to perform the distillation process 10 ml of the dichromate need to add it into the organic solvent and then the funnel need to shake it uh, need to be shake it vigorously and then we vent the build the gas occasionally like at least four times and note that when we open the stopcock, it need to face the opposite from the pupil, and then we we'll need to leave it for a while and until there is a two interface visible. So we flush it down uh, in the below part, which is the base in the dichloromethane. This after that we need to be repeated twice. Uh, after we repeated the process twice of pouring the dichloromethane into the funnel, and then we add them the water, and then we. We repeated the process again until we can get the pure base in the dichloromethane. Now this is the solution that have been ready for the acid flask, base flask, which is the base in the dichloromethane neutral flask. So going through with the distillation of the base, we must ensure that there is no water in the base of in the dichloromethane. To ensure so that there is no water of the base in the dichloromethane, so we can add the drying agent, which is anhydrous sodium sulfate. Uh, like put them like a little spatula in in the mixture and then we swear it until there until the powder start to aggregate after that we can uh, add the boiling agent into the mixture to prevent the the, the base in the dichromethane to become superheated so we can wake uh, the the boiling agent by putting the the agent into the round bottom flask and then we can add them to find the real value of the boiling agent to that we need to put both of them together the boiling agent and the base in the dichromethane except the water or uh, except the drying agent and then we need to set up the apparatus and put the round bottom flask in the steam bus note that the record the temperature of the 14 celsius to prevent the superheating of the dichromethane because the dichromethane boils at the temperature this is the setup of the distillation process and this is the temperature at 14 celsius you can see at this picture after there is no more solution poured down onto this flask we can put down the round bottom flask and then the, we can see that uh, the round bottom flask is now is full of the base and in this flask is now is full of pure dichromethane. Now that uh, after every experiment, we need to clean up the apparatus. For the next part, I will pass the mic to my friend. And thank you. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you, Brother Bahaki, for the outstanding presentation. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. My name is Nima Ba'adam Haikal Bin Subhan, and my ministry number is 2111849. So now, I will continue our presentation with crystallization and sublimation process. Before we get started, I would like to remind you guys that we should always wear a lab coat, gloves, and closed shoes to avoid direct contact with chemical substance during this experiment. So let's go on to the first part which is crystallization. 
for your information, crystallization, also known as fractional crystallization, is a procedure for purifying an impure compound in a solvent. Crystallization is the most important method of purifying non volatile organic solids. As the solvent grows, the solution becomes saturated with the solid and the solid crystallizes out from a solid. I hope that can give you guys a little bit of view about crystallization. So let us see on how to do this process. First of all, we need two flasks labeled as single solvent and mixed solvent. Then we add half of dried acid precipitate in the single solvent flask and another half into another flask which is a mixed solvent flask. After that, we will add 5 ml methanol or water into mixed solvent flask and 5 ml of hexane into a single solvent flask. Be careful when you deal with hexane as you know that hexane is very flammable so keep it as far as you can from flames. Next, we need to heat both single solvent and mixture solvent flask until it's boiled. After it is boiled, left both flask to cool at room temperature. Observe what happened. For mixed solvent flask, immerse it in ice water bath for a few minutes. Then, take out the mixture solvent from the ice water bath and observe both flask to see the result. As you can see, both flasks show that there's solid form in the flask as the time pass. There's a, like a crystal form in the single solvent flask while in the mixture solvent flask contain like some snow in it. After that, the last step is to vacuum filter the crystal and let it dry for melting point and TLC experiment. As you can observe the second picture, we will obtain some crystal after we do this filtration from the single solvent flask. And that is the end of the crystallization process. So now we will move on to the next part of this experiment which is sublimation of the natural compound. So basically, the simple definition of sublimation is the process in which a solid transforms into a gas phase without first melting to form a liquid phase. So let us look on how this is done. Firstly, we need to observe the neutral flask and some dried crystal should be seen. Then, place the flask on a hot plate and do not directly touch the hot plate as it can burn your skin. After that, fill some ice into the test tube, wipe the condensation on the outer surface of the test tube and clamp it to suspend it inside the opening of the flask. By using the hot plate, warm the bottom of the flask and any moisture on the bottom of the test tube must be wiped off. After a few minutes, we can see crystals of the compound will appear on the bottom of the test tube. Continue until most of the compound has sublimed. Then, we need to determine the melting point and identify the natural compound and hand in a sample for grading. The melting point of camphor and naphthalene are 178 degrees Celsius. Lastly, scrap the crystal and save it for TLC experiment. So that's the end of both sublimation and crystallization process. I hope that you guys are fully understand now on how the process works and some precautions that we all should obey throughout this experiment. So after this, we would like to guide you all to the next experiment which is thin layer chromatography technique also known as TLC. Now I would like to pass to my other group mate to test you more about TLC. That's all for me. Thank you for lending me your ears. Thank you Brother Adam for his presentation. Assalamualaikum, my name is Ahmad Ben Hakim bin Wahab Azli. To make the number 2199985, I will present about thin layer chromatography. First, we will take measurement of three sample about 2 gram with on the weighing scale and we will put them into a 5 mm test tube. Next, we will mix them with 5 ml dichloromethane, please make sure that you wear a glove to avoid the dichloromethane block on your hand. Then we will put three test tubes on a rack. Next, prepare to developing solvent, which is hexane, ethanol, 4.5 to 0.5 ratio, dichloromethane and hexane, 4.5 to 0.5 ratio too. 
um, please make sure he sent his far from flame as it is very flammable. Then we will put them into a separate developer chamber. Close the lid of the developer chamber to make sure the evaporate vapor will not go outside. Next, we will we take two silica gel TLC plate. We will make a line, make two lines to horizontal line, it's one cm from bottom and one cm from the top, and we will label sample A, B, C uh, on each of them. Next, we will take a clear capillary tube, we will took the sample and make a dot on the silica gel plate, both of them. After that, we will put one of them each of them into develop, uh, separate developing chamber then we close the lid next we will wait for the plate to absorb the solvent until it, uh, it until it reach the upper horizontal line when it reach we will take them, we we'll take them out and dry for a couple of minutes. We will them dry out in room temperature. Uh, next, we will put them under the short ultraviolet wavelength to see the dot. And we will label the dot with the pencil. Circle them and we will measure the distance from the bottom to the circle. This is the result. Okay, we continue with discussion. First question is about safety precaution, which is we are the cover in every part before. So next, the second question is about Example, discuss example on how extraction process in industry mention the extraction equipment use and discuss the idea behind it. Okay, the first about this process we call percolation. The equipment use is separatory funnel. Uh, the idea is the we extract the active ingredients in plants or herbs using the extract then or solvent when the, we put the solvent first and we put the plant and then we put the solvent the solvent will mix with the herb and it will extract the ingredients inside the herbs and we and we open the dry bulb and get the uh, solvent that we want next we move to the question 3 what is different between the distillation process that you perform in laboratory and the distillation process in petroleum refinery distillation? Discuss the idea and process behind petroleum refinery distillation. Okay, this is simple distillation and this is fractional distillation. The difference between these two is simple distillation separate liquids with um, huge Gap of boiling point, fractional distillation, separate liquid with closer closer boiling point. Uh, the process is the same as the simple distillation. We heat the heat up the crude oil, and it will become vapor, and we will distill it uh, with respective boiling point to get the result that we want. Okay, we move to the question 4. Is there any other type of chromatography instead of thin layer chromatography to identify the unknown? Discuss it. Right, the, this is the column chromatography. The same as the thin layer chromatography type which is liquid solute 
chromatography the mobile the mobile phase is liquid the stationary phase is solid the absorbent absorbent stationary phase is same as silica gel plate sample is the sample we use ABC and we put the solvent which is same as the developing solvent we mix them here and we open the valve and we will see the sol the sample go down to determine the which one is faster the faster drop down means that same as liquid jet the one who goes up faster that's all from us thank you Assalamualaikum and hello everyone. We are from group 2 and today we will present on experiment 1 and 2 which are about the separation, purification and identification of organic compounds. There are a total of 6 parts in this video. The first and the second part will be explained in detail by Najiha. Thank you Auni. Hi guys, I'm Cik Anudah Najiha and I will explain more details in liquid liquid extraction then followed by distillation. For liquid liquid extraction, the aim of this method is to spray all the mixture which contains acid, base and neutral. In fact, every organic reaction requires extraction at some stage in the purification of its product. And you will see in this experiment, the most common solvent that will be used is TCM, dichloromethane. The reasons we use TCM because it is immiscible with water which excellent solvents for organic compound and have low boiling points. So, for the first step, we need to have four flasks and label each with AC, base, neutral and mixture. Then, with 0.2 gram of AC, base and neutral compound. For the precaution step, we need to use different spatula and weighing boat for each compound to prevent contamination. Then, combine them together and dissolve them with 10 ml of DCM. Swirl gently to mix the solution inside the flask until there is no undissolved sample visible. After all, the solution are mixed, then we will do the extraction of the acid. For this process, we must use funnel and retort stand. Before you set up all the apparatus, you need to check either the stop coat is open or not because you will add the mixture into it. If the stop coat is not closed properly, the solution will be leaked. To extract the acid, add 10 ml of 5% sodium hydroxide solution, stop the funnel to prevent evaporate and shake it vigorously. For the precaution step, don't forget to release the pressure by opening the stop coat after shake it several times. Then put it back at the retort stand. Remove the stopper and you can see the two layers separated. As you can see in this picture, the bottom layer which contains TCM we put in mixture flask and the upper layer is acid then we we'll put in acid flask. As usual, to improve the extraction efficacy, we repeat the step to get the most accurate results. For the extraction of base, basically all the steps are same. But instead of adding sodium hydroxide, we need to add 10 ml of 5% hydrochloric acid HCl into the flask that contains this M in the mixture flask. Then we just repeat the same step until we get the separated layers and place the aqueous layers in this flask. After that, at the extraction of acid, we need to repeat again. Then combine the HCl extracts in this flask. This flask contains hydrochloric salts of the base that will be used for distillation process. Now, we'll continue part 2 with the distillation process. Basically, the objective of this process is to get the pure base, but in this method, we use the temperature to extract it. Before we run the DCM layer into a clean airline mayor flask, dry over sodium sulfate and hydrates to remove all the traces and filter by gravity into a clean 50 ml round bottom flask. Then, Set up the apparatus, same like in the picture, and don't forget to put the thermometer inside the round funnel to check the temperature. Next, add the boiling stone into round bottom flask to prevent superheating. Heat on the steam valve 
and note that the melting point for this M is around 40 degrees Celsius while the base is more than 40 degrees Celsius so when it reach 40 degrees Celsius you need to slow down the heat also when it reach 40 degrees Celsius it will bubbling and producing a vapor at this point we should open the water pipe so that it will stay cool or maintain the temperature then wait until it distills and we can see the residue is the base while the drop of liquid fall is actually the TCM so yeah that's it from me and I will pass to Auni to explain for another part thank you thank you Najiha I'm Auni and I will now take over the presentation next separation method that I would like to talk about is recrystallization it can be defined as the solidification of a liquid substance into a structured solid which is a crystal lattice. In our case, we will do the recrystallization on the acid that we obtain from the precipitation in order to get the pure crystals of acid and remove any impurities that might be mixed together. Now, I will go through the next step on how to do it. Firstly, add the dry acid precipitate into a single solvent flask along with 5 ml of hexane. And the other half of acid precipitate is added into a mixed solvent flask with 2.5 ml of water and 2.5 ml of ethanol. During this step, we have to use different droppers in order to avoid any contamination. Then, we need to heat up both flasks until they boil. Do not touch the flask with your bare hands as it is hot at the moment. After that, let both flasks cool at room temperature. We can observe that the single solvent flask have formed crystals. Meanwhile, nothing happened in the mixed solvent flask, so we immerse it into an ice water bath. After a while, the mixed solvent flask finally form crystals. These two flasks form white crystals at different temperature because the solvents have different temperature coefficient. Now, I'm going to explain about the sublimation process. It is actually a process in which a substance directly changes from a solid state to a gas state. This method is used on the neutral compound in our experiment. As we can see in the neutral flask, there was some dry crystal which is a camphor. Place the flask on a hot plate as a first step. After that, fill a test tube with some ice and hang it with a clamp inside the opening of the flask. The purpose of the ice is to make sure the outer surface of the test tube is cold. Wipe it as we don't want the condensation on it. Warm the bottom of the flask using a hot plate. After some time, the crystals at the bottom will turn into gas and deposited at the outer surface of the test tube. The deposited solid will be used for the TLC experiment that will be further explained by Ida. Please bear in mind that you should avoid breathing in the vapor throughout this process since it may be hazardous if you inhale in large amounts. Besides that, do not touch the hot plate as it may burn your hands. Now, I will let Ida explain in detail about the next part, which is on TLC. So, I will explain for part 5, which is thin layer chromatography technique. The objective of this experiment is to learn about thin layer chromatography technique, TLC, to identify organic compounds. TLC is a vital technique for the rapid expression and qualitative analysis of substance. TLC is frequently used to determine the purity of products, analyze a reaction mixture, and monitor various processes. So in this experiment, we will use TLC behavior to identify an unknown compound. The procedure of this experiment is, firstly, we label the tube as ABC, which is acid, base, and neutral. And then we take a small sample of known acid, base, and neutral compound, and we dissolve each of it in 5 ml of the chloromethane. And then we do the same for isolated acid, base, and neutral compound. Okay, then we prepare two rubbing solvent, which is uh, one, is, one contain hexane and ethanol, and the other one is contain the chloromethane and hexane. And then we place 5 ml of each rubbing solvent in the rubbing chamber. And then we label the chamber accordingly and we choose the lid uh, to saturate the solvent vapor and to prevent solvent from being evaporated. And then we prepare two, uh, two TLC plate uh, and label it accordingly. 
make uh, and then we mark a horizontal line with a pencil about 1 cm from the bottom and 1 cm from the top of the plate and then we spot all the three of our noon sample solution on the pencil line using the capillary tube and we use a different capillary tube for each application uh, and then we repeat the spotting for a, for the acetic acid base and neutral compound and then after we spotting the TLC plate then we place the spotted TLC plate in the dropping chamber and allow the solvent to rise within 1 cm of the top of the plate and then we remove the plate and allow the plate to dry so uh, we use a short wave ultraviolet light source to visualize the components and outline and each spot with a pencil and then we can measure the distance traveled by each component compared to the solvent front and compute RF values okay, and then RF is defined as the ratio of the distance traveled by solute to the distance traveled by the solvent so to find the RF value, RF is equal to distance traveled by solute divided by distance traveled by solvent front. We got the value for of the distance traveled by solvent front is 2.8 cm for each TLC paper and for TLC of dichloromethane and hexane, the distance value of component A is 0 0.1 cm and component B is 1.5 cm. So we got the RF value of a of component A is 0 0.125 and for B is 0 0.54 and then for hexane and ethanol paper value the value of uh, A is 0 cm and for B is 0 0.1 cm so the RF value of for each A and B is 0 and 0 0.3 so lastly we compare the RF values to, to the known compound for discussion question number one, I will explain some general safety precautions in this experiment. Since some of the precautions have been mentioned by Najia and Aoni in their part. Firstly, we need to wear a laboratory coat to protect your clothing. Your clothing. Then we should not pour flammable liquids from one vessel to another when there is flame nearby and never heat a closed system of any kind because it will act as a blue. Thank you Aida. Hi, I'm Najiha and we meet again for the discussion part. So, question 2. The question asks about one example on how restoration process is carried out in the industry. Mention the type of restoration equipment used and the idea behind of the process. So, one of the example of restoration process that carried out in the industry is the definition of coffee and tea. Decaffeination is carried out by extraction with decaffeinating agents like water, coffee oils, ethyl acid, and others. Besides, two main extraction methods can be distinguished into direct method, which solvent decaffeination, and indirect method, which water decaffeination. In this indirect method, water is used as the extraction solvent. For direct method, solvents such as methylene chloride, coffee oils, ethyl acid, or supercritical CO2 are used. The idea of direct method is basically the bean soak with water and steam beans swell by 30-40%. Then a decaffeinating agent added to wet beans while the agent solubilized the caffeine from beans. After that, the agent drained and removed from the beans together with 97% of caffeine. The beans dry by vacuum drying and ready for roasting. Note that different type of coffee resulting in different temperature and time that will took. For example, coffee oil that used as a decaffeinating agent may take 69 hours and 95 to 105 degrees Celsius to ready. That's it from me and we'll pass to the Aoni. Thank you. For discussion number three, the main difference between the distillation process that we perform in the lab and the one that performed in the petroleum refinery is the apparatus. We just need a round bottom flask, a beaker, a condenser, and also thermometer to conduct the basic distillation process. Meanwhile, the distillation process in a petroleum refinery requires the use of complex apparatus.
Basically, petroleum refineries use fractional distillation method to separate molecules by their boiling points. When crude oil is superheated, it turns into vapor, which is then fed into the distillation unit. The molecules having a high boiling point condense back into liquid at the bottom of the column. Meanwhile, the remainder of the molecules with lower boiling points rise up, cool, condense, and collect it as liquid in the trays. That's all from me. Alright, so for question number four, the other type of chromatography that can be used to identify the unknown is column, cho column chromatography. So it works just like the LC, which is the same stationary pace and the, mobile, the same mobile pace can be used. Instead of spreading a thin layer of stationary paste on a plate, the solid is packed into a lot. Glass, glass column either as a powder or slurry. A large amount of material can be purified on a chromatography column. So instead of letting it once wick up through the stationary paste, the solvent is poured into the top of the column and allowed to run through by gravity. The same factors of adhesion and solution in TLC apply here. If the same solid paste and liquid paste from TLC are used in column, the compounds will elute through the column in the same order that they elute across a TLC plate. So sometimes, instead of letting the eluent run through the column uh, via gravity, the eluent can be pushed through more quickly using uh, an inert gas or an air pump. So this method is called flash chromatography. So there is sometimes uh, a trade-off between quality of separation and the time it takes to run the column. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. My name is Muhammad Alif Mukri and I am from group number 5. So today I will be explaining the first part of the experiment which is the liquid-liquid extraction as well as the precipitation of the mixture. So let's start off with the first part, the liquid-liquid extraction. So the objective of this experiment is to separate the mixture of the organic compound from an aqueous solution. So let's start off with the acid extraction. So before we proceed with the extraction process, we have to label acid base neutral and mixture flask separately. And then we have to weigh 0 0.2 gram of acid base and neutral compound separately using different spatula to prevent cross contamination. And then add them into a shake flask. The first thing that we're going to do is we have to add 10 ml of 5% of sodium hydroxide along with 10 ml of dichloromethane or DCM into a funnel. So once you add two of them together, you shake it vigorously, shake it vigorously so that the reaction will be fully reactive. And then uh, once the, uh, the shaking process is done, you can see the two layers will be formed, which is the upper layer and the bottom layer. So the bottom layer is actually the dichloromethane. And then the upper layer will be the sodium hydroxide. So the dichloromethane will put into the mixture flask and the sodium hydroxide of the upper layer will be put into the acid flask. So to improve the result of the process, to improve the efficiency of the process, we repeat this step two or three times, several times to ensure the efficiency of the result. Moving on to the base extraction process. So the first thing that we are going to do is we take the mixture flask which contains the dichloromethane layer obtained from the acid extraction process with 10 milliliters of 5% of hydrochloric acid and into a funnel. So once you mix, uh, mix them together, you shake them vigorously and then once the shaking process ends, you can see two layers will be formed. The bottom layer will be the dichloromethane and the upper layer will be the hydrochloric salt of the base. So the dichloromethane layer, you put it into a neutral flask, which contains neutral compound, and the upper layer of the funnel, you put it into a base flask. To improve the result of the process, you repeat the step several times. For the neutral extraction process, the first thing that we are going to do we are going to add neutral mixture obtained from the base extraction process 
with 10 milliliters of water in a funnel so once you combine them up together in a funnel you shake them vigorously until two layers will be formed the upper layer will be an aqueous solution which we are going to discard and the bottom layer will actually be the neutral compound so for the neutral compound we are going to put it into a neutral flask which will be used for the dichloromethane evaporation which will be consumed in the sublimation process so the second part is the precipitation of the mixture so precipitation is basically a conversion from a solution to a solid compound so let's start off with the precipitation of acid as well known as the acidification so the first thing that we are going to do is we go we are going to take the acid flask and put 15 milliliters of 6 molar of hydrochloric acid dropwise into the acid flask then once you have done that you swirl the flask to mix the content thoroughly so once you mix the content you put it into an ice water for solidification once the compound fully precipitate you collect the precipitation by vacuum filtration which will be further used in recrystallization process moving on to the second part which is the basification or the precipitation of the base so the first thing is we are going to take the base flask which contains the hydrochloric salt combined with 15 milliliters of 10 percent of sodium hydroxide so once you mix them up in the flask you put it into a separatory funnel and then once the base flask is empty we are going to rinse the base flask with 5 milliliter of dichloromethane twice which means we are going to use 10 milliliters of dichloromethane in total so now that the rinsing of dichloromethane is used you are going to put it into a funnel as well for extraction process so once you mix the hydrochloric acid salts with sodium hydroxide with the dichloromethane we are going to shake them up vigorously until layers will be formed and then the bottom layer will be the dichloromethane we are going to put it into a base flask which contains the organic base compound and then for the extraction process we are going to repeat it until I am Muhammad Nafais we will continue this experiment by talking about distillation and sublimation process to start the distillation process firstly we need to measure the weight of apparatus we use we begin with measure the weight of empty alien flask and then the alien flask with anti bumping granules anti bumping granules functions to prevent the bumping Thus, it prevents the sample become superheated and then we transfer the dichloromethane DCM into a clean and layer flask and dry over the anhydrous sodium sulfate. We need to slowly pour the DCM plus base into the clean and layer flask to avoid any of the anhydrous sodium sulfate enter the flask. After that, we put the round bottle flask inside the heating mantle and we heat up the DCM layer until it reached the boiling point which approximately 40 Celsius. Once the temperature reached 40 Celsius, the vaporized DCM will moving along the adapter entering the condenser. The vaporized DCM will run along with the cold water inside the condenser and keep moving through the bottom outlet and the liquid came from the outlets of the condenser if the pure DCM that we need. At last, we finish the distillation process if there is no droplet occur. And now, we continue our experiment by doing the sublimation part. Firstly, we observe the neutral flask and see some dry crystal which is basically the camphor. We put the beaker with the camphor inside on the heating plate to warm the bottom of the flask. While warming the flask, we put the ice in the test tube to provide a cold surface outside the test tube. We need to clamp the test tube so that it is suspended inside the opening of the flask. After few minutes, we can see the vapor of the camphor in the beaker. The gas of the camphor 
we go to the cold surface and deposit there. We continue until most of the camp compound has sublimed. And then we can take out the test tube and we can see the deposit at the outer surface which is camphor. If we scrap the outer surface, we can get the neutral compound that we extract. This is basically the sublimation where is the process of solid turned into gas without going into a liquid phase. And lastly, I will be talking about the discussion part, which is the discussion part included in my uh, experiment. First one is the precaution. Precaution that we need to know in the distillation and sublimation part. In distillation, we need to always alert to the temperature reading to prevent it from overheat, which we cause the DCM to burn or to explode. Next, in the sublish, sublimation part, we need to always wipe off the moisture appear at the outer surface of this test tube because we don't want the condensation of the gas. And the second question, which is the last question that I will cover, is the difference between the distillation process that we perform and the distillation process in the petroleum refinery. We need to know petroleum we use the petroleum use fractional distillation which is more efficient and it suits for mixture of volatile liquids. Our distillation process in the lab is much more simpler and less efficient at separating the liquid. But the process is more faster than fractional distillation in petroleum refinery. I think this will end of my part. That's all my me and I will continue about my part. The part is about recrystallization and thin layer chromatography TLC. Recrystallization is the most important method of purifying of, uh, of the organic solid. Recrystallization is involved by dissolving the material to be purified, which is the solute in an appropriate hot solvent. As the solvent cools, the solution becomes saturated with the solute and the solute crystallizes out, which is the form a solid. And later I will show you guys about recrystallization experiment. But for TLC, TLC is a, is a, a solid liquid partitioning chromatography that, that used for determining the purity of material and for preliminary identification purpose. Okay, later I will show you guys. Let's go. For the experiment, you need two flasks of uh, two flasks and make sure you label it single solver and mix solver because we don't want that to be mixed up. Eh? And then you need to put 0.2 gram of uh, acid precipitate in the single plus and another half 0.2 gram of acid precipitate for the mix solvents. You add 5 ml of hexane into a single solvent. While for the mix solvent, you just add water. Water, just 5 ml of water into a mix solvent. And then we, we, we heat up both flasks until it is boiled. Right, for the single solvent, uh, after we boil it, for the single solvent, we just put it uh, uh, left, put sebelah, put sebelah at a room temperature, just uh, leave it, leave it, wait it until a few minutes and then something happen. Yeah, crystallization happen. Yeah, this is for the single solvent. But what about mist solvent? Let's go. Solvent, we different, it's a little bit different from from single solvent, we put it in ice for mix solvent. Mix solvent and make sure that you put it in ice. We you tenggelamkan, tenggelamkan, and make sure the ice is uh, full, 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 full touch the surface. And you, and that the result is yeah yeah mix solvent. Mix solvent is a little bit hairy uh, and different from a single solvent. Yeah, as you can see, yeah, this is because. The for the single solvent, the acid is atom. The acid atom is 
have a time to rearrange themselves and form like a sharp needle. But it's different from Mr. Solvent. For Mr. Solvent, we use a fast cooling. And as you can see, it's more like hairy and it's different. Yeah, it's different. And because what? Because the acid atom inside the inside the Mr. Solvent doesn't have enough time to rearrange themselves. And because of that, it look a little bit hairy. Okay, this is a vacuum filtration technique. Vacuum filtration technique is uh, the technique that we use to remove the liquid from a solution. Um, Alright, let's go. Okay, so this. Oh, uh, make sure, make sure that uh, the filter paper is thick enough, thick enough to to hold to hold the liquid that you put, and and also make sure that you pour slowly. Don't just Ooh, no 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 it will make the filter paper koyak tear tear up right and yeah so as the result yeah you can see a beautiful crystal this is a vacuum filtration technique right, let's go to a TLC okay for a thin, uh, for the thin layer chromatography you need to prepare a TLC plate three test tube and we label it as a, a B and C and this is about TLC developing chamber as a DCM and uh, and hexane ethanol all right all right after that we just take a sample known as the acid which is for benzo acid base is for a P chlor chloroaniline and for another one is camphor camphor which is neutral neutral compound so acid for uh, for a test tube A, base for a test tube B, and C for uh, neutral, and and then each of this test tube we dissolve it with five milliliter of DCM, which is dichloromethane. Okay, for the developing uh, solver, you need to prepare two of it, which is for right, like we will label it first, that like for first DCM and hexane. So, but this is a ratio that we need to follow for the this uh, for the DCM and hexane you need to follow 9 to 1 uh, ratio in a 10 milliliter it's mean like uh, 9 9 milliliter of DCM and 1 milliliter of hexane so so this is for DCM and hexane for another developing chamber we use uh, same also same 9 1 9 1 ratio for, but it's different which is hexane hexane is 9 milliliter and for the uh, and plus ethanol one milliliter. That's the ratio. And then after that, remember uh, the test tube that we prepare about A, B, and C. Which the test tube uh, we use capillary, 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 and then we use just a drop for A for A test tube. Just tap A, and then we just put it in the TLC plate. TLC plate just a little bit tap uh, like that for A, and also for B. We just put it at the A plus X plates, yang tanda A plus X so. And for C, also same top. And for the, uh, and we put it at X. Okay, also same uh, for the both side, both uh, for the both TLC plates. Okay, after we do that, we have two TLC plates. One we put it in the DCM hexane, DCM hexane developing chamber, and another one we put it at the hexane ethanol developing chamber, and we just wait until the solvent absorb to the TLC plate until it touch the line that we. Need. Okay, after the solvent absorb and touch the line that we mark, we just pull it out, pull it out, and let it dry. Put it out the, and this is the DH, uh, DCM and hexane, and another one that on your right is hexane and ethanol. And as you can see, there are nothing, eh? there are nothing at the TLC, uh, TLC plate. Okay, after this, I will show you something magic. Yeah. Okay, the magic that we use is uh, a short wave with ultraviolet light source. So this is it. Yeah, a short wave. Uh, this is uh, pretty uh, dangerous if uh, if the uh, ultraviolet is direct, direct, direct spot in your eye. That there is no uh, halangan. Uh, that 
if you make your eyes blind so as you can see we put a, a glass a lutsina a glass lutsina that prevent the ultraviolet to direct contact with your eyes yeah it's pretty dangerous yeah it's, it will make your eyes blind and then we outline each, each spot with the pencil okay retardation fa uh, factor is the is the ratio of the solute distance travel to the solute solvent distance travel so the ethanol uh, and hexane the retardation factor of it is uh, 0.32 and 0.17 while for the dcm and hexane is 0.556 and 0 Bismillahirrahmanirrahim Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh So my name is Muhammad Suhair Min Zukafli with matri number 2114435 And today I'm going to explain to you about the, the experiment 1 and 2 Which is the separation, purification and identification of organic compound Alright so for my part I'm going to explain to you about the liquid liquid extraction Alright so for the mixture preparation We need to wait and mix 0 0.2 gram of acid uh, we use benzoic acid right here and base we use p chloro and a line and neutral and then we add 10 ml of dcm and swirl it around a little bit and then put it on the funnel after that on the funnel we need to put 10 ml of sodium hydroxide we need to shake it uh, when we shake the funnel, uh, we need to occasionally vent out the build-up gas uh, by opening the stop cock, and then we let it sit uh, for, for the layer to form. All right, so as we can see right here, you can see uh, two layers, uh, the, uh, the upper layer and the bottom layer. So the bottom layer uh, contain um, uh, the neutral component, the base component, and the DCM, and the upper layer right here you can see the up layer contain these extracts so put the bottom layer into the mixture uh, plus and the upper layer into the acid plus uh, this process need to be repeated um, uh, at least twice uh, to obtain the maximum amount of acid from the mixture so then let us uh, move on to the base and neutral extraction. So as you can see right here, uh, we need to take the leftover mixture uh, that we obtain from the acid extraction and put, put 10 ml of hydrochloric acid. As you can see right here, the mixture become pink in color. So why is this happening? is due to, uh, we suspect that in the funnel itself, there are some leftover of uh, iodine. For, uh, it is important for us to uh, make sure that all apparatus that we've been using in this experiment is kept clean. Then as usual, uh, put it, uh, the mixture into the funnel and shake it uh, and then up the build up gas and let it sit for uh, the layer to form. And here we can see there are two layers, the bottom layer and the upper layer. All right, so here in the upper layer, it is a mixture solution, which is in here it contains DCM and neutral component. And then in the bottom layer, uh, in the bottom layer, it contains the acid, acid extract. So run off the bottom layer into the base plus, and after that, run off the upper layer into the neutral flask and then take the neutral flask and repeat this process again obtain uh, the maximum amount of base uh, that we can obtain from the solution all right for the last two picture right here uh, so to take uh, the neutral uh, flask uh, that we just obtained right now and put it back into the panel and add 10 ml of water and then shake it and burn up the build up gas and let it sit to layer form and then run off the bottom layer uh, into the neutral flask and discard the upper layer. There are two precautions uh, in this uh, experiment, which is the first one is we need to vent up 
the build up gas uh, on the funnel occasionally uh, when we shake the funnel uh, by opening the stop cock. And the second one, we need to make sure that all the apparatus that we use for this experiment is being cleaned properly to avoid uh, unnecessary accident from heaven. So for this discussion part, it asks us um, how this extraction process being carried out in the industry. So it is used mainly where other separation methods or direct distillation are not effective uh, or too expensive. It is typical use include separation of components with similar boiling point, example, as uh, separating aromatics from hydrocarbon. In the chemical industry, there are three main types of extraction equipment uh, in use, which are the mix, mixer, settler, extractor, extraction column, and centrifugal extraction equipment. So for this part, I will give centrifugal extractor, which also known as centrifugal contractor or annular centrifugal contractor, as an example, because due to the time lacking, uh, it used the rotation of the rotor inside a centrifuge to mix two immiscible liquid outside the rotor and separate the liquid in the field of gravity inside the rotor. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum. I'm Rushaidi and I will present distillation of base and sublimation of neutral compound. So what, is, what we need to do in this station is first we need to add this M layer in to the aluminium flask, then add sodium sulfate into the flask and put the flask on the distillation apparatus. Heat up this M layer until 40 degrees Celsius. And then once the temperature is 40 degrees Celsius, we need to slow down the heater. Wait until all the DCM separated. So what we can observe from this distillation is the black oil we obtained in the aluminium flask is based while the liquid that condensed during distillation is DCM. Next is sublimation of neutral compounds. So first step is we need to observe the neutral flask because some dry crystal should be seen. Then place the flask on hood plate. Next step is fill the test tube with ice and then wipe all the condensation on the outer surface and clamp it so that it will be suspended inside the opening of the flask. Using hood plates, gently warm the bottom of the test tube. If moisture appear on the bottom, we need to wipe off them. At the short time, crystal will be appear on the bottom of the test tube. Then continue all until all the compound will be sublime. In this question two, the question is what is different between distillation in the lab and distillation in petroleum refinery? So in the lab, the apparatus is commonly made up of glass and connected with cards, rubber bands, or ground glass joints. For industrial application, so larger equipment of metal or ceramic is employed. So petroleum refining is an industrial process which crude oil is extracted from the ground and transformed and refined into the new product which is gasoline, kerosene, oils, fuels, and many more. So crude oil is made of, of mixture uh, hydrocarbons and the distillation process aims to separate this crude oil into its fraction. The crude oil is first heated and then put into the distillation column or its steel where different products boil off and are uh, recovered at different temperature. So that's all from my part. Thank you. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi ta'ala wabarakatuh. Uh, thank you to Rashidi. And now I will continue with my part, which is pre-crystallization. And before I forget, my name is Nasrud. First and foremost, we label the flask regarding to the solution that 
we will use to it is to ensure that the experiment running smoothly without any confusing regarding to the flask and also easy for us to recognize which flask it is. For the label, we will label one of the flasks as a single solvent flask and the another one as a mixed solvent flask as you can see at the top picture at the picture top picture on the left side. Uh, for both flasks, we will use uh, zero we will add 0 0.2 gram of benzoic acid. Next for the single flask, we added 5 milliliter of hexane while for the mixed flask we added 2.5 milliliter of ethanol and 2.5 milliliter of water. After that, we place both flasks on the hot plate and heat up the solvent until the benzoic acid dissolves in the both flasks and become the solution. <laughs> the reason why we heat up the solvent is because both of the solvent are organic compounds. Therefore, the benzoic acid cannot easily dissolve in the organic compounds. For your information, which is not included in the slide, which for the first attempt, we heat up the single flask solvent. The hexane evaporated very early when we heat up the solvent. The reason behind this is because the lack of amount, the lack amount of hexane in the flask, therefore, the hexane evaporated and the product is only the benzoic acid for the single flask solvent. To overcome this issue, we repeated uh, the steps. We added another 10 ml of hexane and repeat the heating process until the benzoic acid dissolves. Then we will keep the single solvent flask in the room temperature while the mixed solvent flask at under the room temperature is on the ice, uh, ice bath. After a few minutes, we will get the product as showing on the slide here at the bottom. At the bottom left for the single solvent flask, we will have a transparent crystal uh, while uh, for the mixed one, we will have a white crystal looks like all day. Then uh, we move to the next part, which is for the single flask, we want to extract the crystal. First of all, we will set up the apparatus which is called vacuum filter, filter uh, which uh, consists of the, the paper, receiving flask, vacuum and so on. As you can see at the pictures and uh, that I start, uh, that's the look like looks of the apparatus. First, we added the water into the single solvent flask, which consists of crystal. The reason why we done that is because the water function as a lubricant, which can ensure the crystals to come up from the flask smoothly without breaking up the crystal structure. Then we swirl, we swirl the flask and pour it on to the filter paper as we had set up earlier. The water will drop to the receiving flask and the product will see crystal on the filter paper. Then pull the filter paper out with the crystal on it and let it dry at the room temperature. The reason why we use vacuum in this part is because we, uh, if we just pour the crystal all with the water without vacuum, it may take a long time for the the water to drop from the crystal, which only depends on the gravitational forces. For the precautions, we must take care of the level of the water in the receiving glass. If the water level is so high, the water will enter the vacuum tube and broke the vacuum machine, which caused thousands of ringgits. And secondly, uh, while waiting for the crystal product, do not swirl the flask to avoid any breaking structure, which may lower the rate of recrystallization. That's uh, and, and I think that's all from me. And I will pass the floor to the Nabil to explain about the thin layer chromatography. And I think that's all from me. Thank you so much. Assalamualaikum, I'm Nabil Ahmadi and I will continue with this, the last part of our experiment which is thin layer chromatography. So this experiment is done to identify the unknown uh, organic compound or the unknown organic compound based on their absorption properties which also depends on their strength of interaction with the stationary phase which in this case uh, the silica gel. So the first step of our experiment is to prepare the sample solution. So first we need to take a, a small sample of acid base and neutral and put them into three different test tubes. 
and then label them as A, B, and C. Okay, and then we have to dissolve the sample by adding 5 milliliter of BCM, uh, which is dichromated into each tube. After done preparing the sample solution, we move to the next step, which is to prepare the developing chamber, which, which uh, by preparing two developing chambers. So each developing chamber will have five milliliter of developing solvent, which the first solvent have uh, a mixture of hexane and ethanol uh, by the ratio of nine to one, while the other solvent consists of a mixture of dichromethane and hexane also with the same ratio nine to one. Okay, after done preparing the developing chamber, we label them and we move to the next step, which is to prepare the silica gel tercipate. So we, we need two of them. And then we make two lines of, uh, two lines at the, at the two line, one centimeter from both top and bottom of the plate. And then at the bottom layer, at the bottom line of the plate, we label three spots with A, B, and C, which indicate the plate at which the place at which we will spot the sample. Okay, after done labeling the and preparing the TLC plate, we spot all three of the sample solution using capillary tube on the plate, which is at the bottom line of the plate. Okay, so at this step, we have uh, a precaution that we need to take, which is we have to use different um, capillary tube for, the, for each sample so that the sample will not be mixed up when we spot them on the TLC plate. So after we done uh, spotting all the TLC plate, we put the spotted TLC plate uh, into the, into each uh, so into each developing chamber and then we wait until the solvent reach the um, the upper line of the plate which is one centimeter from the top so as soon as the solvent reach the the upper line we quickly remove them from the remove remove the plate from the chamber and let it dry at room temperature so after both of the plate are completely dry, we put them under UV light to visualize the compound traces of movement. And then we outline the spot, the spot of, that we see using a pencil. All right. So after that, uh, so this is the result. We can see that uh, A is going like that, B is moving directly, and C is uh, one can be seen and another cannot be seen. So this is the final result at which uh, we have traced by a pencil. So from the traces, we can calculate uh, the compound retardation factors uh, by measuring the uh, by measuring the movement by measuring the distance traveled by each compound uh, based on the based on this outline. So to determine, uh, so to determine or to identify the uh, our unknown compound, we can comparing the com comparing the retardation factors with the known compound that have uh, that we have done. Okay. So as for discussion, aside from using uh, thin layer chromatography method, we can also use column chromatogra uh, chromatography method, which is also under the same solid liquid chromatography to identify our unknown compound, our unknown organic compound. This method also use the same concept, uh, which is the separation of chemical compound based on their absorption properties. So this column uh, contain a stationary phase at which we, they will allow the uh, motion phase to pass through it. So the, so the, sample mixture will be separated according to their strength of interaction with the stationary phase. Uh, so that's all from us, group six. Thank you. Assalamu alaikum. I'm Aina Shafika from group one for Chen Lab One. I will begin our group's presentation with introduction. 
In this experiment, we had three steps to complete. The first step was extraction of liquid wheat. Extraction is the process employed to separate an organic compound from an aqueous solution or suspension. This process consists of shaking the aqueous solution or suspension with a water immiscible organic solvent and allowing the layers to separate. The various solutes present and distribute themselves between the aqueous and organic layers according to their relative solubility. Thus, inorganic salts, which are almost entirely insoluble in the common organic extraction solvents, will appear exclusively in the water layer. And most organic substances, which are essentially insoluble in water, will appear in the organic layer. The next step is recrystallization. The purpose of this part is to show how an impure solid can be purified by recrystallization. Recrystallization is one of the most useful and frequently employed methods of purification of organic solids. The process by which a substance forms crystals is extremely sensitive. Different compounds will crystallize within the same lattice, but except for solvent molecules. This selectivity makes recrystallization an excellent purification method. Crystallization may be accomplished by the fused solutions. And then, the third step was TLC. TLC is thin layer chromatography. Thin layer chromatography is a very important technique for the rapid separation and qualitative analysis of small amounts of material. It is also used to help identify unknown compounds, to determine the purity of products, to analyze a reaction mixture, and monitor various processes. Various processes. In this experiment, we use melting point and TLC behavior to determine the identity of an unknown compound. So, in terms of the problem statement, just imagine having three different compounds of which one does not know which is the acid, base, or neutral, only for them to be mixed together. So, the idea of these experiments from the extractions of each reagent, precipitation, distillation, recrystallization, sublimation, and identification via thin layer chromatography. Not only will we be able to obtain each compound separately, but we will also be able to take a step further by obtaining in their pure form. Um, the initial use of dichloromethane during the extraction experiments allows us to instantly determine what immiscible liquids we are working with um, based on their density. And once each and every compound has been successfully separated, it is followed by the purification processes, especially distillation, recrystallization, and sublimation. Thank you, Sister Natasha. Now proceed to equipment used. As you can see here, this is the list for materials and apparatus. For materials, we use sodium hydroxide, hydrochloric acid, hexane, methanol, lacrimethane, and hydrosodium sulfate and boiling stones. For apparatus, we use wagging balance, spatula, wagging boats, filter paper, vacuum pump, retort stand, filter funnel, test tube, sheet flask, and TLC developing chamber. Now, proceed to experiment 1.1. Basically, for experiment 1.1, what we need is we need to prepare the mixture. So, first thing that we did was level the acid flask, base flask, neutral flask, and mixture flask. Next, we weigh 200 gram of acid, base and neutral compounds separately. Um, we use separate spatula and wagging boats for each to prevent contamination. And then we add them into a shake flask and dissolve them with 10 ml of dichloromethane. We swirl gently the flask during the dissolution process until it fully dissolves. So proceed to experiment 1.2. It is basically the extraction and precipitation of the acid. So um, the first step is that we need to we need to support the separatory funnel using retort stand, make sure it is vertical, and then we close the stop cork and we add in the mixture. Next, um, because it dissolves in the solvent, so if we put water, it will not dissolve. Thus, we add base to attract the acid. The base that we use is 5% of sodium hydroxide solution which is 10 ml and then we stop the funnel and we shake it vigorously several times. Um, Dichromethane will evaporate over time when it is closed so that's pressure so because of that we need to run off the pressure gas. Um, when release it we, need, we don't um, point it to friend. 
Next, uh, we place the funnel vertically and remove the stopper and then we let it sit until we got two layers which is top is the aqueous space and bottom is um, the chloromethane. After a while, when we see the layer, we open slowly until the layer is stuck, which is the dichloromethane, into the mixture flask. And then we pour the other layer, which is the aqueous sodium hydroxide, into the acid flask. When we extract the dichloromethane, acid may be in the flask again. So, what we need to do is we, we need to do it twice for more efficiency. Note that for our information, dichloromethane is actually denser than water. That's why it is at the bottom. Um, organic chemistry is the thing that dissolves at the beginning. So if we want to extract them, the base will attract the acid. And the acid from the mixture flask will go to aqueous base. Then we get the organic acid salt. So actually when we shake, some acid may not be extracted. That's why um, we repeat the step. Um, and we will gain more extraction and more efficient. Now for experiment 1.3 is the extraction of base and neutral. So basically um, the mixture plus still has base and neutral. So we want the base thus we add acid to attract the base which is 5% of hydrochloric acid um, which is 10 ml. So we separate the layer and put it in the top layer in base flask and bottom layer in neutral flask. Now we have three flasks which is neutral flask, contain neutral and DCM, base flask, contain base and aqueous acid, and acid flask, contain acid and aqueous base inside. So then we left the neutral flask open to evaporate um, the dichloromethane. For experiment 1.4 is the extraction, distillation and recrystallization of base. Now we do distillation for base only. Neutral and acid we put aside. So basically the first thing that we need to do is we put the base inside the dichloromethane again. Inside that we have watery acid and soluble base. The reason why we put um, dichloromethane is because during distillation, um, we need to separate the dichloromethane. So we need to make um, the base insoluble first. By doing that, we add um, sodium hydroxide because it has more concentration which will make the precipitate over time. So here we have bottom base and dichloromethane. So we need to discard the top because there's nothing inside. There might be water and we, can, we cannot add water to attract water. Instead of using water, um, we add anhydrous sodium sulfate which is a drying agent. It will absorb um, all the water. So, um, note that um, anhydrous is a whitish powder and when we put it inside, it will attract the water and become clumpy. Thus, we need to swirl it gently until all the water um, will go to the powder. Before we do the distillation, we need to make sure the neck clip is firm and then the water will go inside from the bottom and leave from the top. So um, we need to make sure there's no air pocket and then we put in the round bottom flask and it will heat and boil around um, 40 degrees Celsius. The steam will go into the jacket and we will get the dichloromethane because dichloromethane melting point is lower so it will separate um, faster. Note that we need to make sure the tube is slanted so that the liquid will flow down. Thank you, Sister Maha. Now let's move to the next step, which is recrystallization of the acid. Recrystallization is a procedure for purifying an impure compound in a solvent. As the solvent cools, the solution becomes saturated with the solute and the solute crystallizes out. The first step is we add half of dried acid precipitate in a flask, which is single solvent flask, and another half into another flask, which is mixed solvent flask. After that, we add 5 ml of hexane into single solvent flask and 5 ml plus 5 ml methanol plus water into mixed solvent flask. Next step, we heat, we heat up both the flask until it boils and then we leave the both flask to cool at room temperature. As we, can, as we can see in this picture, the crystallization present in single solvent flask was nearly perfect. However, for the mixed solvent flask, we do left it for about 5 minutes in the room temperature. But we were running out of time, so we put it into the ice bath and wait for a few minutes. 
the crystallization occurred but not in a very nice shape or condition as it's supposed to be like in a single solvent. This happened because recrystallization needs to proceed slowly to get a nearly pure crystal compound. If you pull down the solution so quickly, the impurities will precipitate out of the solution. <clears throat> Afterwards, we combine our single solvent solution with group 2 to proceed to the next process which is vacuum. We use double layer filter paper to avoid leaking during the process so that we will get all the crystals filtered out from. And then we let it dry at the room temperature. The next process we did was sublimation of the neutral compound. Sublimation is the transition of a substance directly from the solid to the gas state, which it will pass through without the liquid state. So the first step was we observed the neutral flask that we left a week in the lab. Inside the flask, we saw some dried crystals on the bottom. So to proceed with the next step, we took a test tube and filled it inside of it with ice. And then we wiped any condensation that occurs outside the test tube. The test tube was then clamped on top of the opening of the flask. By using the hot plate, we heat up the bottom of the neutral flask. Any occurrence of moisture was quickly wiped off. This is to prevent the product from wash away. Because if it is moist, the crystal won't occur on the surface of the test tube. After some time, the crystal was seen on the bottom of the test tube. And then, we continued to heat, heating it until the sublimation process is fully done. The crystal then was scrapped off from the bottom of the test tube. The last experiment that we did was thin layer chromatography. I have explained what is TLC in my introduction part. So now, I will get on with the first step of TLC. Firstly, <clears throat> take small sample of acid which is benzoic acid base, chloroaniline, and neutral camphor around and dissolve each of it in 5 liters of dichloromethane. The same steps were repeated for isolated acid, base, and neutral compound. Next, two dissolving solvents of 10 ml was prepared in flask. The first flask was prepared with a ratio of 9-1 hexane ethanol and the next flask was prepared with a ratio of 9-1 dichloromethane and hexane. 5 ml of each developing solvents were placed in developing chamber. The chambers were labelled accurately. Then the lid was closed to saturate the solvent vapour and to prevent the solvent from being evaporated. Silica gel TLC plate containing fluorescent indicator was obtained. A horizontal line was marked with a pencil about 1 cm from the bottom and 1 cm from the top of the plate. <clears throat> Then, all three of the sample solution will be marked on the pencil line using a capillary tube. A clean capillary will be used for each sample application. The spotting will be repeated for isolated acid, base and neutral compound. The spotted TLC plate was placed in the developing chamber and allowed the solvent to rise within 1 cm on the top of the plate. The plate will be removed and allowed to dry. A short wave of ultraviolet light source will be used to visualize the components and each spot was outlined with a pencil. Then the distance traveled by each component compared to the solvent front was measured and then R values was completed. Thank you Ainon. Now proceed to precaution steps. The first picture shows that we need to use different spatula for each substance to avoid contamination. Next is what, um, when running off the pressure gas, make sure we don't point it to friend. As for the third picture, make sure that the temperature at thermometer must 40 degrees Celsius at all times because this um, dichloromethane boiling point is lower so we need to alert. Lastly, be careful when handling chemical solutions because it is very corrosive. Thank you Sister Noha. Now we'll move on to the results starting with the liquid liquid extraction. Here you can see the success of separating neutral, acid, and base, where all three were initially named as unknown in their solid form during the early stage of their experiment. And after obtaining a pure neutral via DCM operation, it then proceeds to the sublimation process. And for the base, on the other hand, will undergo a distillation process. And finally, for the acid, the flask has been covered and kept for a week for the next experiment known as recrystallization of acid. And below here, we can see the distillation of base where vaporizing, vaporizing at a temperature of 40 degrees, the DCM then condenses and is collected in a beaker. So next, on the precipitation of acid, we acidified the acid flask, which in a way you're decreasing the pH value to a stronger acid 
and then after putting it in a ice water bath uh, and vacuum filtration we precip precipitates can be seen on the filter paper and next the recrystallization of acid both single solvent and mixed solvent were found different after cooling for the single solvent it looked nicer and more arranged whereas the mixed solvent it looked more like crushed ice as the latter the mixed solvent was instantly cooled in a ice water bath next for the sublimation of neutral compound the results we found were that the crystals at the bottom of the test tube were found and which were basically just the neutral compound in a vapor state now turning into solids and then finally the TLC experiment you can see the outline of the hexane ethanol solvent is different from the dichloromethane and hexane solvent and the RF for B which is the base is different and higher in terms of 0 0.7 and 0 0.3 than A which is the acid which is at 0 0.3 and 0 0.2 RF is the distance traveled by the compound and then divided by the distance traveled by the solvent front. So basically the smaller distance traveled by the acid in both the TLC plates comes from its low affinity and the higher the RF value the faster the compounds move up the plate. So the base which is a stronger compound moves at a higher speed and distance. Finally I'll proceed with the discussion. So what are the precautionary steps that must be observed and what are the consequences if they are not followed? Uh, considering the array of chemicals and even the shortwave UV light we've used in the thin layer chromatography experiment, precautionary steps as mentioned um, are to be taken seriously. So gloves and lab coats are to be worn at all times to ensure that no one accidentally is exposed to the harmful regions and materials we used. And failure to follow these uh, precautions will lead to a number of consequences, including but not limited to health issues. So even by not wearing gloves, you are already extremely vulnerable to accidents such as chemical spillage, contamination, which of course can lead to major issues like skin irritation, burns, and radiation. Should the person have not noticed this until the very last minute, their condition can go as far as chronic effects possible. Next, um, state an example of how extraction process is carried out in the industry. So, much like the liquid-liquid extraction experiment done in the lab, the food industry utilizes uh, extraction process just as much. Say we talk about soybeans. The extraction of fatty acids from soybean oil makes the process useful in terms that they have immiscible liquids in the products. So the equipment is known as the solvent extraction unit where the sizes varies and they, uses, and they use hexane as its preferred chemical of extraction. So other than the distillation flask and a condenser, the apparatus for distillation via in the lab is easy to obtain, but the distillation unit used in a petroleum refinery is a different story. So in the lab, we were able to obtain just one final product, which is the base in its liquid form. But in petroleum industries, they would at least have five separate uh, units, depending on what they wish to obtain. So petroleum refineries go through a number of processes in order to get different kinds of products, so, including distillation, cracking, and purification. You can see that in this diagram, that the lower you go, the higher the temperature is. So from the number of carbon atoms to their boiling point, one can obtain an abundance of petroleum products from lighter products which are at low uh, boiling point like propane and butane to gasoline and jet fuel up to heavier products at high boiling point like lubricating oil and fuel oil. Finally, other than the TLC or thin layer chromatography, there are other chromatography techniques that one can use including paper chromatography, column chromatography, and gas chromatography that you can see in this picture right here. And on the right, you'll see the ion exchange chromatography. So for the ion exchange chromatography, 
it is when the charged molecules are separated. So the technique may be divided into two, the anion exchange and the cation exchange. For the anion exchange, anions are attracted to the positively charged support contained in the chromatography column. The same concept is applied in the cation version, but the cations are the one attracted to the negatively charged support in the column. So this technique allows one to separate biomolecules like proteins especially if they are unknown. That is all from us, from group 1. Uh, thank you very much. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Assalamualaikum. We are from group 2. So today we will do a presentation regarding experiment 1 and 2. These two experiments cover the topics which are separation, liquid liquid extraction, purification, and identification of organic compounds. The members of this group are Hasina, Aziha, and me, Arisha. So, we will begin the presentation with liquid-liquid extraction, precipitation, distillation, recrystallization, melting point determination, and lastly, thin layer chromatography. The first one is LLE. What is LLE? LLE is liquid-liquid extraction. It is also known as solvent extraction or solvent partitioning. These methods are used to separate compounds into Immiscible liquids, usually water and an organic solvent. In this experiment, we will do a separation process of different constituents which are acid-base and neutral that have mixed up in an aqueous solution. The method we use is liquid-liquid extraction. Extraction is the process used to separate an organic compound from an aqueous solution. This process consists of shaking the aqueous solution with water immiscible organic solvent and allowing them to separate by layers. In this experiment, the constituents that we want to separate first will be separated by liquid partitioning. The visual is there are top and bottom layer in the separatory funnels. So, when we want to separate both of them, we need to dispense each of it in different flasks. The solutes present in the solution will then distribute themselves based on their solubility. The organic salts which are insoluble in organic solvent will appear in water layer while most organic substances which are insoluble in water will appear in organic layer. The equipment that we use in this experiment is flask, separatory funnel, retort stand and working balance. While the material that we use in this experiment is benzoic acid, p chloroaniline, camphor, Ethanol, methanol, water, dichloromethane, hydrochloric acid, and sodium hydroxide. For safety precaution, when we use a separatory funnel, the pressure may be built up inside the funnel and we need to release the pressure cautiously by opening the stopcock slowly. While handling dichloromethane, benzoic acid, p chloroaniline, and other material, we must wear gloves as all the material that we use are irritant to the skin. Firstly, we need to label all the flasks accordingly to their constituents acid, base, neutral, and mixture. And then, we weigh 0.2 gram for each constituent and mix them with dichloromethane in the flask. Ensure there are no undissolved material visible inside the flask. Support the separatory funnel with the retort stand and close the stock cork. Sodium hydroxide is added to separate the acid from the mixture. And then, stopper the separatory funnel and shake it vigor vigorously. The pressure is released by opening the stock cork and don't forget to not direct the separatory funnel to your friend. Then place the separatory funnel upright and then we wait for a few seconds. Then we can see there are separated layers inside the funnel. Dispense the bottom layer into the mixture flask and pour the top layer inside the acid flask. The bottom layer is run off into the mixture flask and the aqueous layer is added into acid flask. This acid flask contains the sodium salt of the acid. The DCM layer in the mixture flask is added with hydrochloric acid. Stop the funnel and shake it vigorously and don't forget to release the build up pressure inside. The bottom layer, which is contained neutral compound, will be run off into the, into the neutral flux, while the top layer, contained acid extract, will be dispensed into the base flux. The neutral compound is washed by adding the dichloromethane in the neutral flux. The solution in neutral flux is poured into separatory funnel. Water is added, funnel is closed with stopper and shake it vigorously to separate the layers. The dichloromethane layer is run off into neutral flux and is cut the aqueous layer. And then the transfluss is left slightly open for the dichloromethane to be evaporated. 
You try compound a solvent in organic solvent, aqueous acid, and aqueous base. Therefore, no change can take place as no layer can be separated to differentiate between neutral compound and the other compound. For acidic compound, when get treated with the sodium hydroxide, which is the aqueous base, the benzoic acid change into salt sodium benzoic, which is insoluble, which is soluble in water. From this, the benzoic acid can be separated from the dichloromethane. For basic compound, when get treated with hydrochloric acid, which is the aqueous acid, the p chloroaniline will change into hydrochloroxide, which is soluble in water. Therefore, the p chloroaniline can be separated to from the dichloromethane. To recover benzoic acid from sodium benzoic salt, further extraction process are needed. This method are called precipitation by acidifying the sodium benzoic salt with hydrochloric acid. The purpose of this acidification is to convert the benzoic ion, which is completely soluble in water, to benzoic acid, which is insoluble in water. From the experiment overview, we are clear that to collect the precipitate of benzoic acid, we must acidify the benz sodium benzoic salt from the liquid liquid extraction before. 15 ml of hydrochloric acid is added into salt sodium benzoate from the previous experiment. Then the flask is gently swirled and traces of DCM is removed by dropper. The benzoic acid is precipitated and to collect the precipitate, we need to use vacuum filtration. The benzoic acid will be scrapped and placed inside the petri dish. From the result, benzoic acid can be recovered back from salt sodium benzoate solution by acidification. The sodium benzoic salt is protonated by adding the hydrochloric acid. Thus, the benzoic acid is formed. Sodium benzoic salt is sodium salt and is ionic and is dissolved in water. Sodium benzoic salt reacts with hydrochloric acid to give sodium chloride and benzoic acid. Benzoic acid is insoluble and it, it is precipitated. Solvent extraction is a chemical oil extraction method to process oil out from vegetable, oil seeds and nuts by solvent that preferably may be hexane. The purpose of solvent extraction is to isolate hazardous materials from sediments and sludge or to separate useful materials from debris. Solvent extraction is achieved through grinding of seed. The ground seed or cake is purged or washed by hexane distillate which will release the oil from the seed. The equipment used in the solvent extraction is rotary extractor. Move on to the next part, distillation. It is basically to separate the mixture of dichloromethane and base by vaporizing. How distillation process can get pure substance from the dichloromethane in base solution? In this experiment, basically we were using aluminium flask, retort stand, thermometer, round bottom flask, hot plate, separatory funnel, and dropper. 15 min sodium hydroxide were added into the base flask that contained hydrochloric acid extracts. Then, we observed uh, a little cloudier on the base flask. Base flask was rinsed two times by 15 ml dichloromethane, total of 10 ml, and it was added to the separatory funnel. The funnel was closed by the stopper and it was shaped vigorously. After, we observed the layer of dichloromethane at the bottom layer, and then we run the bottom layer into the empty base flask. Then, the extraction was reported. 20 ml water was added into the separatory funnel. The separatory funnel was shaked again and run into the empty base flask. After that, we added unhydrated sodium sulfate and filtered by the gravity into 50 ml of round bottom flask. After that, we added boiling stones into the round bottom flask. Distillation process was set up. The round bottom flask was heated on steam bath after the liquid fell into the receiving flask, the residue is the base. Distillation can separate mixtures of liquid by asphalting differences in the boiling points of different components, as dichloromethane have boiling point about 40 degrees Celsius. It is evaporate when we boil the mixture, therefore we get the best solution. Today, in laboratory, we perform about 40 degrees Celsius temperature as we want to remove dichloromethane from the base solution. In the petrol refinery, it play up to 370 degrees Celsius. In laboratory, we perform distillation and have a product of base solution. While in re refinery petroleum, they have a lot of product because they have multi-component and fraction of the distillation. 
In conclusion, we can get pure base or any compound by distillation process. First and foremost, always wear glove to avoid any irritation on our skin. Some of the toxic chemical like dichloromethane may irritate our skin. Next, open the stock cup carefully after shake the fun separatory funnel to, to remove the pressure. Shake the separatory funnel at the safe area which no one there to avoid any incidents. Next, the stopper needs to open during the stop cock open to let the solution go into LMA flask smoothly. It is to prevent the mixture of both layers. Boiling stones was added to prevent superheating of the solution. Make sure the temperature stay about 40 degrees Celsius to let the dichloromethane vaporize and not the base. Recrystallize is one of the methods to purification of organic solids. Sublimation is the process that solid straight away turn into vapor or vice versa. How to perform recrystallization from organic substance? How crystal turn into vapor straight away? The method that we may use is anime flask, ice cube, retort stand, test tube, hot plate, vacuum filter, and dropper. Half of dry acid precipitate were added into the single and mixture flask, and then 5 ml of hexane were added into the single flask, while 5 ml of methanol and water were added into the mixture flask. After that, both of the flasks were heated up. After a while, single flask shows crystal and it is filtered by the vacuum filtration. Mixture flask, nothing happened after a few minutes, therefore, we put it into the ice bath. After that, we observe crystal in the flask. Single flask crystallize faster because it contains single component. For mixture, it still can form crystal at the cooler solution. This is because cooler solutions contact forcing minerals closer together, so they create bones catching impurities in their structure at the same time. On to the sublimation, natural flask was observed have dried crystal. Test tube was filled with ice. Flask was placed on hot plate and test tube was clamped to be suspended inside the opening flask. After a few minutes, crystal appears at the bottom test tube as the picture attached. Solid phase change to vapor without turn into liquid can perform by sublimation. Lastly, safety and precautions. First, use double or triple filter paper to avoid any leaking during vacuum filtration. Second, after boil the crystal solution, do not disturb to form the best crystallization. And lastly, wipe the condensation of test tube on the outer surface to prevent it to drop the into the aluminium flask. Thank you, Hasina. Okay, let's just proceed to my part, which is thin layer chromatography. Oh, before that, my name is Aziha Bitim Muhammad Salmi. Okay, so let's start it. Test tube for prepare and label with A for benzoic acid, B for p chloroaniline, and C for camphor. Second step is each test tube will fill with small amount of benzoic acid, p chloroaniline, and camphor. Each of it will dissolve in 5 ml of dichloromethane. So this is dichloromethane, so we need to put this inside this. After that, 5 ml of two developing solvent of hexanes and ethanol and the other one, hexanes and dichloromethane were prepared. Each developing solvent were put into the developing chamber according to the ratio 9 to 1. As a precaution step, the lid were closed to saturate the solvent vapor and to prevent solvent from being evaporated. Then, silica gel's three-layer chromatography plate was obtained and marked. A horizontal line with a pencil one centimeter from the bottom and from the top of the plate. Uh, for your information, you need to use the plate that contains the fluorescent indicator. After 
that all the three sample solution was spotted on the pencil line using capillary tubes as a precaution step to prevent the sample solutions from mixing. Different capillary tubes were used for each sample application. The spotted delay chromatography plate were placed into the developing chamber and the solvent was allowed to rise to within one centimeter of the top of the plate. Next, the plate was removed and allowed to dry. This picture. This one. After that, an ultraviolet light source was used to visualize the component and each part was outlined with the pencil. As a precaution step, make sure to wear gloves, black coat to prevent the UV light radiations. Also, make sure that you expose to the UV light in a short time period to prevent the, the radiations also. Don't forget to use plastic, plastic cover to avoid the UV light also. Lastly, the, the distance traveled by each component of the solvent front was measured and RF value was calculated. Both of the developing solvent, dichloromethane he and hexane and hexane and ethanol are non-mobile carrier while the sample are called mobile carrier. The thin layer chromatography plate contain absorbent which is silica gel. Based on RF value calculated from the table for the DCM and for the DCM and hexanes, sample A traveled the most compared to the sample B. This is because sample B has the strength of interaction stronger than the sample A, which may it bind tightly to the silica gel. The silica is the the the, the, the plate. Okay. So for sample A traveled the most because it is the least polar. So it binds to the silica least tightly and is more soluble in the non-polar solvent or the developing solvent. Same for the hexanes and ethanol situations. Sample B is the most polar compared to the sample A due to its weakness strength bind to the silica cell. So, so for the discussion part, Number four, is there any other type of chromatography technique other than thin layer chromatography that can be used to identify the undiscussed one of it? In my opinion, that yes, there is. Okay. So we call the chromatography name is column chromatography. So the one that I'm going to show right now is the uh, pictorial representations of a column chromatography separation setup. This way. So, first step, this way. The analyte is loaded over the silica bed and allowed to adhere to the silica. Uh, in this case, silica gel will uh, act as a non mobile carrier. Okay. The second step is. Uh, the solvent is then uh, made to flow through the silica bed. So, which means we got three things inside for the second step, which is silica, and then an alloy, and then the solvent. Okay. So, the third step, uh, the component, the analyte will start to do separating up. Okay, like the third. The one that I'm going to circle right now. So this one, the different component of the analyte exhibit different degree of adhesion to the silica, and as a result, the component of the analyte will travel at different speeds through the silica as the solvent flow through it. Okay. The fourth step, then we can 
different shape, the different band that being separated like this one, okay? So, same concept with thin layer chromatography. The component that adhere most strongly to the stationary face travel more slowly compared to those with a weaker adhesion. Okay, so thank you for watching. That's all from my group. Bye. Assalamualaikum and hi everyone. I am one one three seven three seven Azri Rafi, and my group will talk about our first and second experiment that we have done in the lab, which is about separation, purification, and identification of organic compound. The main objective of this experiment is to familiarize us with the technique that I just have said now, which is liquid liquid extraction. The process consists of shaking the aqueous layer solution or suspension with a water immiscible organic solvent, which is dichloromethane. That we use in this experiment and allow the, allowing the layer to spread because of the density. Next distillation, and then we already done also sublimation and the thin layer chromatography. The detail of the process procedure that I said now will be presented by me and my group next. Now I will pass to Izham for the full explanation of the preparation for our lab. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh My name is Muhammad Izzaha My metric number is 2115 and 75 I will explain the beginning of our experiment Which is the preparation of mixture First, we will have 4 plus with, That we will label with 4 different labels Which is label of acid plus, base plus Neutral plus and mixture plus. Then, after we finish labeling, we will weigh 0.2 gram of acid, base, and neutral compound separately. To prevent contamination, we will use separate reading board and separate spatula. All the compound that have been weighed, we will put into the mixture plus, and we will dilute it with the 10 milliliter dichloromethane. Dichloromethane is the solvent for our compound next we swirl the mixture flask gently until all the compound dilute in the solvent and there is no undissolved compound in the mixture flask thank you Isam for the explanation of the preparation process now let's go back to me I will talk about the liquid liquid extraction First, to spread acid from the mixture that we have diluted with the TCM, we use 10 ml of 5% NOH, sodium hydroxide, to spread the acid from the mixture. First, we take 10 ml of 5% NOH and mix it with the mixture and we pour it into the separatory tunnel. Then we close, make sure the stop cock is closed, then we shake it vigorously several times and then release the pressure by opening the stop cock. Then, we close and shake it vigorously several times again. Then we release the pressure again and we repeat the process until the pressure is all released. Then we put it in the written stand and then we wait for the layer to form. Then, uh, based on the picture, you can see the layer, it has two layers, the bottom and the up one. And the, the solution that contains the acid that we want is at the up one. The, at the bottom one is the diameter and the base. Then we run the DCM into the mixture plus until the separation line. Then we pour the, the upper layer into the acid plus. Then we repeat the process. We repeat the process to ensure all acid in the mixture have already been extracted. As you can see, in our acid flask, when we extract the acid from the mixture, it has white precipitation. Maybe it is because contaminated by the impurities, and it doesn't affect our result anyway, because we managed to extract the acid from the mixture. Okay, next, for the separation of the base in the mixture, we use 10 ml of 5% hydrochloric acid, which is we mix it into the mixture flask, then we pour it into the separatory tunnel. Then we repeat the process and as we extract the acid, which is we shake the separatory tunnel 
Superatory tunnel vigorously and then we release the pressure Then we repeat the process until all the pressure in the superatory tunnel is released It is because, or I for you to explain why we need to release the pressure is because we want to avoid the bubbles when we spread the layer So when we release all the pressure, we put the superatory tunnel into the retard tank Then we wait until the layer to form it We run the bottom one, the DCM and the one into the mixture flask again until it reach the line, the spiratory line, then we pour the remaining into the base flask. Yeah, as you can see, our base is perfectly, perfectly extracted without no impurities like our acid. So the neutral compound, we mix it, the remaining 10 ml of H2O into it, into the, the flask, then we pour it into the spiratory tunnel also. We also do the same process. We shake the spiratory tunnel vigorously and release the pressure and we put it into the retard stand and wait for the layer to form and as we know the upper layer is the water because the water is dense more dense than the DCM in the nature and we spread the water layer into the neutral flask at the end of the liquid liquid extraction we have then extracted the acid base and nutrient from the mixture next we use uh, the base on the base first for the distillation process to do so we need to basify the hydrochloric the hydrochloric in the base fly first. To do so, we put 15 ml of 10% NaOH sodium hydroxide into the base flies into the base flies. As you can see, the difference between before and after we put the 10 15 ml of 10% NaOH, it has white like white precipitate and before it is clear and when we put it it has something like whitish things it is because the hydrochloric acid has been pacified then we need to rinse the base flash with the 10 ml of DCN then we pour it into the we pour the solution into the spiratory tunnel then we Need to do the same process we shake it vigorously and release the pressure until the pressure all released and put it at the retard stand and let it let the layer to spread the bottom and upper one okay so the bottom layer contain contain the organic compound that we need when we want the base and the dcm and the upper one is the hydrochloric acid that have been specified so we need the bottom one to run the distillation process then we open the stop cock and let the bottom one into the base flask and then we repeat the process we put repeat the process with the remaining of the of the of the upper one to ensure all the organic compound has been separated into the base flask for the distillation process we pour the all the organic compound with the DCM into the LMA flask the round the bottom with round flask it's called element flask pour it into it then we, we put the boiling stone to avoid the superheated of the organic compound the distillation process the organic compound in the element flask need to be boiled in the steam bath until it reached 41 degrees celsius which is the boiling point of the dcm then the dcm will evaporate and run through the water funnel and cool down and become the liquid then we can spray the dcm and the base that we want Okay, now let's go to the discussion one of this experiment one and two. Let's wait and put the amount of the compound correctly. It, if not, it will contaminate the result and can produce impurities in the result, like my acid flask that contain white impurities in it. Next, pressure must be released after shaking the separatory funnel because to ensure there is no bubble. By not doing so, the bubbles can appear and we can hardly see the separatory line between two density fluid. Lastly, add the boiling stones before running the distillation process in the LMA flask. Without boiling stones, it can superheat, possibly ruining an experiment and simply making a mess. Now, I will proceed for the sublimation, recrystallization and the discussion for question 2. For sublimation, after it had been left for a few days, we, our group can see a dried crystal occur in the neutral flask. So, 
we want to separate the dichloromethane from the neutral compound so we use the sublimation process method this is because the neutral crystal will turn into the vapor gas when it being heated to start the sublimation process first we will put the neutral flask on the hot plate then we fill up uh, ice in the test tube we need to wipe the outer surface of the test tube that have been filled with ice to avoid the condensation drop into our neutral flask that will contaminate our neutral compound in the neutral flask then we suspend the tube inside the opening of the flask that we start to turn on the hot plate to warm the flask or to start the process need to be careful with the moisture occur on the bottom of the test tube wipe it up with a tissue after being heat for a while in a short time a crystal of the neutral compound will occur and on the test tube bottom the reason of the crystal occur because it is a reverse sublimation from heat that because the vapor of neutral compound that have been heat is being cooled instantly and formed into the crystal bag at the bottom of the test tube we will continue this process until most of the compound had been sublimated next is the recrystallization of acid for this process we add dry acid precipitate into two flasks which is single solvent flask and mixture solvent flask in the single solvent flask we add 10 ml acid to dilute the acid precipitate then for the mixture solvent flask we add 10 ml methanol then we boil both flasks until all the acid precipitate in the both flasks dissolve after the acid precipitate dissolve in the both flasks then we leave the single solvent flask cool in the room temperature while the mixture solvent flask we immerse it into the ice bath for the cooling process meanwhile for the mixture solvent flask and the single solvent flask undergoing the cooling process there will be crystal starting to occur in the flask in our observation the crystal occur in single solvent flask seem to have more beautiful shape than mixture solvent flask. The difference for both cooling occur is because the cooling process in single solvent flask is slower and have more time to form the crystal. But in the ice bath, the cooling process is much faster and the process to crystals form had been pushed that's make the crystal less beautiful than in the single solvent flask after most of the crystal occur we do the vacuum filter process in order to take out the crystal to dry it discussion number two for the example of industry that use extraction is the food industry in food processing extraction is defined as a transfer of one or more component of a biological feed from its source material into a fluid phase followed by a separation of the fluid phase and recovery of the components from the fluid most common type of extraction in this industry is the solvent extraction which is the most widely used method Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh My name is Swan Mawa Arif bin Warazli Matrix number 211-8897 I will be explaining the thin layer chromatography part in the experiment so Firstly, three test tubes were filled with around two spatulas full of known acid, benzoic acid 
base p chloroaniline and neutral camphor compound. Next, all three were dissolved in 5 ml of dichloromethane. After that, two 10 ml dissolving solvents were made, one part containing 9 parts of hexane and the next is one part of ethanol. The second solvent was made with 9 parts of dichloromethane and one part hexane. Then, two silica gel thin layer chromatography plates containing fluorescent indicators were obtained. These plates were then marked with a horizontal line, one centimeter from the top and one centimeter from the bottom with a pencil. Next off, all three solutions from the test tubes were spotted onto the marked sites on the plate we are using a capillary tube. Once done, the TLC plates were added into each of the developing chambers and left until the solvent has risen up until the horizontal line on top of the plate. Once the solvent has reached the line, it, ha it was removed and left to dry. Finally, the distance traveled by each component was measured and compared. So firstly, three test tubes were filled with around two spatulas full of known acid benzoic acid, base p chloroaniline and neutral camphor compound. <clears throat> now for discussion number three, we were asked what is the difference between the distillation process that we've done in the lab versus the distillation process that is done in petroleum refinery. For short, the process of distillation done in petroleum refineries are far more complex than the one we've done in the lab. Uh, this is because in the petroleum refinery, crude oil is distilled and separated into far more different components such as gasoline, butane and kerosene and way more. The distillation process in petroleum refinery is done by separating these oils by its different boiling points. Meanwhile, the distillation process done in the lab is simple as it only separates two different compounds which are the dichloromethane that we've evaporated and the base that we've left behind. For discussion number four, we were asked if there were any other types of chromatographies out there besides thin layer chromatography that we could use in our experiment in order to identify, identify the unknown. There are lots of other types of chromatographies out there such as paper chromatography, column chromatography, flash chromatography, and anion and cation chromatography. One of these types of chromatographies we could use is column chromatography. Column chromatography works by absorbing different solutes of a solution with the help of stationary phases like silica, alumina, and cellulose, which separate these mixtures into its different discrete components. There are two different types of column chromatography techniques, which are the met dry method and wet method, but both can be used in an experiment. Instead of spreading a thin layer of the stationary phase on a plate, they're like during thin layer chromatography, the solid stationary phase is packed into a long glass column, either as a powder or slurry in, a, in column chromatography. The objective of the experiment is to learn the separation, purification, and identification of organic compounds using techniques such as liquid-liquid extraction, precipitation, distillation, recrystallization, sublimation, melting point determination, and thin layer chromatography. For the problem statements of the experiment, first, how to separate organic compounds by liquid-liquid extraction, precipitation, and distillation. Second, how to purify organic compounds by recrystallization and sublimation. And third, how to identify organic compounds by melting point determination and thin layer chromatography. For section 1.1, the preparation of mixture. The materials that we need are plus, spatula, wing boot, wing balance, acid, base, and neutral compound, and dichloromethane. 
before conducting the experiment. Please dress appropriately for the session and wear gloves as we are dealing with acidic substance. The first step for preparation of mixture is we need to label the acid first, base first, neutral first, and mixture first. Labeling is important to avoid mistake in experiment as the substances are colorless and hard to distinguish. Next, weigh 0 0.2 gram of acid, base, and neutral compounds separately using the weighing balance. To avoid contamination, please use spatula to take the compound and put it in weighing group before weighed it on weighing balance. Then, put the 0 0.2 gram compound in the label class accordingly. Dissolve them in 10 ml of dichloroethene and swirl the glass gently to dissolve it. Please make sure that there is no undissolved compound visible. For section 1.2, extraction and precipitation of acid, the materials that we need are retort stem, separatory funnel, vacuum pump, 5% sodium hydroxide and 6M hydrochloric acid. For safety precaution, please wear a glove and make sure your working place is neat. The first step for extraction and precipitation of acid is to pour the mixture that we prepared before and 10 ml of 5% sodium hydroxide in the separatory funnel. Make sure the stop cock is closed so that no mixture spill out of the funnel. Shake the funnel vigorously and slowly open the stop cock to release pressure. Then, Support the separatory funnel using retox stem by placing it upright in the eye. Left it for a while to allow the layers to separate. After the two layers is visible, observe which layer contain an extracted acid sample. Then open the stopcock to allow the bottom layer, which is the dichloroethene, into the mixture first. Control the stopcock carefully to make sure no aqueous sodium hydroxide accidentally enter the mixture flask. Pour the other layer, which is the aqueous sodium hydroxide, into acid flask. Pour back the dichloromethane layer into the funnel and add 10 ml fresh 5% sodium hydroxide. Make sure the stopcock close. Shake the funnel, release the pressure by opening the stopcock and repeat the extraction process to improve efficiency. Run off the bottom layer, which is the dichloromethane, into the mixture flask and pour the aqueous layer in the acid flask. Note that the aqueous extract in the acid flask contains the sodium salt of the acid. Then, add 5 ml of 6M hydrochloric acid in the acid flask that contains the sodium hydroxide extract to acidify it. Swirl the flask to mix them. Next, Cool the mixture in ice water bath and collect the precipitate using vacuum filtration. The next procedure is section 1.3, which is the extraction of base and neutral. The materials that we need are again the separatory funnel, retort stand, 5% hydrochloric acid. First, extract the dichloromethane layer in the mixture flask from before with 10 ml 5% hydrochloric acid. Pour them in the funnel, shake it, and run off the bottom layer through the stopcock carefully until all the dichloromethane enter the mixture flask. Pour the remaining aqueous layer in the funnel, in the base flask. Add another 10 ml fresh 5% hydrochloric acid together with the dichloromethane and repeat the extraction process. Combine the hydrochloric acid extract in the base flask. Note that the solution contains hydrochloride salt of the base. Put the flask aside for the stitching process. Then, pour the remaining dichloromethic layer into the neutral flask that contains the neutral compound and pour them in the separatory funnel. Add 10 ml of water, shake it and let the layers separate. Run off the dichloromethic layer into the neutral flask and discard the, ex the aqueous layer. Left the neutral flask slightly open to evaporate the dichloromethane and set aside for section 2.2. Thank you, Alia. So now I will continue by explaining the extraction and distillation of base. Basically, right now, in the base flask contains base and aqueous acid. 
and we want to extract base from the aqueous. Just like in the first picture, we will basify the base flask by adding 15 ml 10% sodium hydroxide, which is more concentrated base. After that, we can observe that it becomes whitish. Next, we add it into the clean 16 ml separating funnel. After that, we add 10 ml DCM into the base flask to rinse it and add the rinse to the separating funnel, which already contain 15 ml 10% NaOH and HCl extracts. The reason to add this M is because base tend to be attracted to organic solvent and remember to handle the chromatin with K as DCM are toxic. Next, stopper the funnel and shape vigorously just like the first picture in this slide. Also, open the stop cock to raise the pressure and make sure not to point the nozzle close to someone when shaking. Next, place the funnel upright at the retort stand and remove the stopper. We can identify that there are two layers and the bottom one is base and DCM, while the one at the top is aqueous. We pour the bottom layer which contains base and DCM into the base flask and proceed with the extraction of the aqueous with the top layer as they may have some base left in it. Therefore, repeat the extraction process by adding 10 ml DCM into the aqueous layer until the aqueous layer becomes less whitish as base combined with the DCM. So right now in base flask contain base and DCM. Base and DCM have different boiling point. Thus we can do separation process by boiling point which is distillation. Next, prepare the distillation apparatus. Set the condenser, receiving flask, round bottle flask, heating mantle and the thermometer. Set it up just like the first picture. Next, based on the second picture, Dry agent and hydrosodium sulfate need to be added into the base flask. This is because in distillation, we do not want water to interfere with the process. Over this time, we can see the dry agent powder start to aggregate as they capture the water. After that, pour it into the 15 ml round bottom flask. And to avoid superheating, boiling stood added into the round bottom flask. After that, place the round bottom flask on the heating mantle with the thermometer and heat it to let the DCM vaporize. Boiling point of the DCM is 40 degrees Celsius and pure DCM will enter into the receiving flask and the distillation end when there is no drop of pure DCM fall into the receiving flask. After that, we can remove the round bottle flask and right now, and the round bottle flask contain base. Done with the extraction and distillation process of base. Next, I will explain about the recrystallization of the acid. From the first picture, we prepare two flasks and label it with single solvent flask and mixed solvent flask. Labeling is very important to ensure the experiment happens smoothly and get the expected result. After that, add half of dry acid precipitate in the flask labeled single solvent flask and another half into mixed solvent flask. Next, add 5 ml hexane into single solvent plus. Remember not to measure it close to your face when getting the hexane and hexane is very flammable. Thus avoid it from nearing flames. While for mixed solvent plus, add 5 ml methanol in it and after then with both plus, heat them until boiling on the hot plate. Shake the flask a little bit when boiling just like in the picture. After that, left both flasks to cook at room temperature. After a few minutes, we can see crystal form in single solvent flask. For mixed solvent flask, we immerse it in ice just like in the picture. Next, take the single solvent flask and proceed with the vacuum filter the crystal. This process is to take out the crystal. While we busy taking out the crystal from single solvent flask, the crystal in mixed solvent flask form. We can observe that the crystal obtained from both flasks are different in look. And here is a more clearer view of crystal form. Next is the sublimation of neutral compound. Sublimation is the process of solid phase directly to gas phase. After a week, we can observe in neutral flasks from previous experiment that there are some dry crystal. Place the flask on hot plate. Next, just like in the picture, Fill a test tube with some ice and wipe the outer surface of the test tube before clamping it on retort stand. Make sure the test tube suspended inside the opening of the flask. After that, switch on the hot plate to warm the bottom of the flask and make sure 
the white bottom of test tube before heating start. After a few minutes, we can observe that crystal will appear on the bottom of test tube. Firstly, we dissolve a small sample known as a base and neutral compound in 5 ml of BCM and then repeat it again for acylated acid, base and neutral. After that, we prepare two developing solvents which are hexane and ethanol and also DCM and hexane in a ratio 9 and 1. So we have 10 ml in each flask. Next, we add 5 ml of each developing solvent to the developing, developing chamber and we label it. And then we close the lid to saturate the solvent vapor and prevent it from being evaporated. After that, we got two silica gel TLC plates with fluorescent indicator, one for no sample and another one for isolated sample. Then we use a pencil to draw a horizontal line about one centimeter from the bottom, one centimeter from the top. And then we use a capillary tube to spot all three known sample solutions on the pencil line. For each application, we use a clean capillary so that we repeat it again for another isolated acid, base and neutral. We put the spotted TLC plate in the developing chamber and allow the solvent to rise up until 1 cm at the top. After that, we remove the plate and let it dry first. After that, we mark each place with a pencil after visualizing the parts with a short wave UV light sources. So basically, the retention factor is used to compare and help identify compound. So our F value of compound is equal to the distance traveled by compound divided by the distance traveled by the solvent front. So this is the calculation that we get from the result. From this experiment, we get several precautions that can protect us from any consequence. For the first, we must maintain a safe distance from the DCM in order to avoid breathing the vapor and having it come into contact with our skin and eyes. We also need to put the waste into the waste container to avoid contaminating other solution. We must also keep the lid of the chamber closed at all times to prevent evaporation. Last but not least, we should not touch the surface of the TLC plate with our finger. After we did some research, we found a lot of extraction mechanism in industry and one of them is in producing pharmaceutical products which are heat sensitive products. The equipment that they use is a centrifugal extractor so that the organic compound and aqueous solvent used to make this product will be fed from the bottom and will take up residue in the annular space. In the annular space, it has a rotary cylinder that will mix the solvent and organic compound that we use. So, it will form the centrifugal force that will extract the compound that we want. Because the extracted product has a lower density than mixture solvent, it will emerge from a different nozzle than a solvent. So that they will come out of the nozzle at the bottom, while the mixture solvent will come out from the top. So, what is the difference between distillation that performed in laboratory and petroleum refinery? Petroleum refinery is using fractional distillation which makes use of a complex apparatus with a fractionating column, whereas simple distillation makes use of a flask to contain a mixture and collect per five component and also a condenser. Furthermore, Fractional distillation cannot be used to separate a solvent from solute, whereas simple distillation can be used to do so.
Basically, petroleum refinery starts from crude oil. Crude oil is a fossil fuel that we get from the deep under the ground. So it's basically a mixture of lot of different compounds. Crude oil is need to separate out all of the different hydrocarbon in the mixture because they have different properties that can be used for other things. To do the separating, we use a process called fractional distillation which involves heating the crude oil and separating out different compounds by using their boiling point. So the first step is to feed the oil into the chamber and heat it up until it until into the gas. The gases mixture is then passed through the fractionating column, also known as a distillation unit which is really hot at the bottom but gets cooler toward the top so these hot cases will start rising up the column and when they reach a lower temperature lower temperature region then their boiling point they will immediately condense into liquid Besides thin layer chromatography, we can also use gel filtration chromatography, also known as size excretion. Based on this chromatography, we can separate molecules according to their size. In the DFC, it has beads with channel running through them, such as a growth. When the sample moves down from the top of the column, large molecules cannot enter the gel pores and continue to elute, while smaller molecules can freely enter the internal solvent space of the gel pores. The larger the molecular weight, the earlier the elation time. Gel filtration chromatography is often used to separate polymer compounds such as tissue extract, peptides, proteins, and nucleic acid. So let me introduce to you to liquid liquid extraction. A liquid liquid extraction is a method used to remove an organic chemical from an aqueous solution or suspension which is called extraction. The aqueous solution or suspension is shaken with an organic solvent that is insoluble in water and then the layers are allowed to separate. The different solute then arrange themselves between the aqueous and organic layers based on how soluble they are in each medium. As a result, the majority of organic compounds which are virtually insoluble in water will appear in the organic layer but inorganic salts which are mostly entirely insoluble in the typical organic extraction solvent will only appear in the water layer. So we start our experiment by preparing the mixture to be used. Firstly, we label the flask with acid flask, base flask, neutral flask and neutral flask by using a marker. Then we weigh 0.2 grams of acid, base and neutral compounds separately by using separate separate spatula and making boot for each of them to avoid contamination. We add them into a shake flask and dissolve them with 10 ml of dichloromethane. Then swirl the flask gently to dissolve the sample and ensure there is no undissolved sample in the flask. Next, we will move on to the extraction and precipitation of the acid. First of all, we need to support the spiratory funnel by using a retort stand. Then, close the stop cock and add in the mixture that had been prepared before. Next, because it dissolves in solvent, just by adding water, it will not dissolve. Hence, in extracting the acid from the mixture, base was added to attract the acid where 10 ml of 5% sodium hydroxide solution were used as the base. The funnel is then closed with a stopper and shaken vigorously several times. When in closed conditions, DCM will evaporate over time and cause pressure inside the funnel. Hence, we need to release the pressure gas. The next one, place the funnel vertically on the retort stand and remove the stopper. Let it sit until it appears to be two layers where the top one will be the aqueous base and the bottom one will be the DCM. Then, after the layers can be seen, open the opener slowly allowing the dichloromethane to run into the mixture plus until the layer gets stuck. The other layer which is aqueous sodium hydroxide will then put into the acid plus. When DCM is extracted, acid may be in the plus again. Hence, we need to undergo extraction again to improve efficiency. 
for your information, the CM is denser than water, hence it is why it's on the bottom of the funnel. In terms of extraction, the bees will attract acid and acid from the mixture, plus will then go to the aqueous bees producing organic salt. When it's shaken, some of the acid may not be extracted, and to increase the efficiency, the extraction process must be done twice. So for this part, we will undergo extraction on bees and neutral. Right now, the mixture plus still contain uh, of base and neutral. In this part, we need to extract the base. Hence, 10 ml of 5% hydrochloric acid was added. As the layer has been separated, the bottom will be in the mixture plus, while the upper layer in the base plus. And now, we consist of three plus, which is neutral plus, which consists of neutral and DCM, base plus, which consists base and aqueous acid, acid plus, which consists of acid and aqueous base. The neutral plus is being left open so that the dichloromethane could evaporate. For the next part, we need to undergo a distillation process just for the base while the neutral and acid needs to be put aside. Firstly, base is being inserted inside DCM again. In that, it consists of watery acid and soluble base. Hence, we need to make the base insoluble first. By doing that, uh, sodium hydroxide is added because it is more concentrated which causes it to precipitate over time. Then, we have a base at the bottom and a DCM. The top part must be decarded because it consists of nothing. It might consist of water and it cannot be attracted just by adding water in it. Hence, that's why drying agent which is anhydrous sodium sulfate was used as it will absorb water. For notation, anhydrous is whitish powder and when we put inside a liquid, it will attract water and become clumpy. Thus, we need to swirl gently until all water will change into powder. So before doing distillation, we need to make sure the neck clip is firm. Water will go inside from the bottom and leave from the top. Make sure there are no air pockets. Then, put in a round bottom flask. It will heat and boil around 40 degrees Celsius. Steam will go into jacket and we will get DCM because the DCM melting point is lower. So it will separate. Note that we need to make sure the tube is slanted so that the liquid will flow down. Next, we go on for the precaution step. For the precaution steps in this part, I have listed four precautions that I think are important when doing this experiment. Firstly, do not apply the tip of the funnel to your friend when releasing the pressure gas. The second one, do not mix up the spatula and use the respective spatula for each substance to avoid contamination. Then, make sure the thermometer is at 40 degrees Celsius as the boiling point of the DCM is lower, hence we need to alert. Lastly, be careful when handling chemical solution as it is very corrosive. As we now for a very clear explanation regarding the liquid extraction and distillation, I am Masha. I will proceed for the recrystallization of acid. Firstly, we measure the acid precipitate to be added into two flasks, which are the single solvent flask and the mixed flask. Half of the acid precipitate is added into the mixed flask, and another half is added into the single solvent flask. Then, we add 5 ml of methanol or water into the mixture flask and another 5 ml of hexane into the measuring tube to be poured into single solvent flask. Next, we heat up both of the flasks using the hot plate but in this picture, I was heating up the mixture flask. Then, we leave both of the flasks on, on the surface of the table to be cooled to the room temperature. During the cooling process, we observe the physical changes where the solution changes into crystals. From these two pictures, we observe that both of the, both of the flask creates a very different shapes of the crystals. In crystal 1, which is the single solvent flask, the shape of the crystals looks stony and very messy. Meanwhile, in crystal 2, which is the mixture flask, it, the shape of the crystals looks very um, neat and um, very nicely shaped. In crystal 2 picture, there is a hole in between because we did not twirl, swirl the flask properly. Therefore, it is very important to properly swirl your flask to ensure all the solutions are properly mixed. In this, in the first process, do not forget to tear the machine to zero. We will affect the reading and your measurement will be inaccurate. Make sure there is no precipitates left on the surface of the machine. Left by a degree of it will affect your reading as well.
This is the single solvent plus. We need to filter out the solution to complete the crystals. We need to add a few drops of water droplets onto the filter paper to ensure the filter paper sticks properly onto the crucible. So this is to ensure there is no leaking and the solution is filtered thoroughly. Then we pour the single solvent plus is the single solvent solution onto the filter paper. Once poured, we let it dry and we can obtain the crystals here. As you can see, there is a hole on the filter paper. This is because uh, we this is why we need to use two filter papers to make sure that the filter paper does not break. Once the filter paper breaks, the uh, residues inside this single solvent flush will enter the solution filtered. The next product procedure is sublimation. What is sublimation? Sublimation is the process where solid changes to gas without passing through uh, the liquid phase. This is the neutral flask obtained from the extraction process explained by Sister Asmina. Firstly, we need to heat up the neutral flask. If you see it closely, there is some dried crystals in the flask. Then, we fill in the test tube with crushed ice. Condensation will occur on the surface of the test tube and then we need to wipe the surface of the test tube properly. The reason that we need to wipe the surface of the test tube is to prevent condensation from happening outside the test tube. So therefore, the crystals can form on the bottom of the test tube. Then, we clamp the test tube so that it is suspended inside the opening of the flask. Next, we warm up the flask gently. Then, as we can see, we warm up the fl both flasks for 2 minutes here. Next, we can observe that there is a small amount of crystals seen on the bottom of the test tube. Lastly, we scrape off the small amount of crystals that can be seen on the bottom of the test tube. Thank you, Marsha. Hi, I am Sarah. Let us proceed to 2.4, which is thin layer chromatography. TLC is a technique for the rapid separation and qualitative analysis of small amounts of material. First, three test tubes were prepared and labeled with ABC. Each of the test tubes were filled with small sample known acid, benzoic acid, base, p chloroaniline, and neutral camphor compound. Then each of it will dissolve in 5 ml of dichloromethane. After that, 5 ml 2 development solvent of hexane and ethanol and another one, dichloromethane and hexane, were prepared. Each developing solvent will pour into the delivery chamber according to the ratio 9 1. They will label accordingly. Precaution step here is the lid will close to saturate the solvent vapor and to prevent the solvent from being evaporated. Next, two silica gel TLC plate will obtain containing fluorescent indicator and mark a horizontal line with a pencil 1 cm from the bottom and 1 cm from the top of the plate. All three of the known sample solution were spotted on the pencil line using capillary tube. Here, to prevent the sample solution from mixing, different capillary tube were used for each sample application. Next, the spotted TLC plates were placed in the developing chamber and then the solvent was allowed to rise to within 1 cm of the top of the plate. The plate was removed and let it dry. A short wave ultraviolet light source was used to visualize the component and each spot was outlined with pencil. The distance traveled by each component compared to the solvent front were measured. Then, RF value were calculated using formula B over A. Precaution step here is needed because of UV light exposure. Avoid direct skin or eye contact with UV light. Use UV protect shield to look toward UV and wear glove and let go when working under UV light, especially for short exposure for outlining the spot during visualization of the LC plate to prevent the UV radiation. These are the results obtained and calculated. For your information, both of the developing solvent, dichloromethane hexane and hexane ethanol, are the non-mobile carrier while the known sample are called mobile carrier. TLC plate contain absorbent, which is which is silica gel. For dichloromethane hexane, sample B travels the most compact to sample A in the solvent. 
this is because sample B has strength of interaction weaker than the sample A, which make it bind less tightly to the silica to, to the silica gel. It also shows that sample B is least polar, so it is more soluble in non-polar solvent or developing solvent. The same thing happened to the sample in hexane and ethanol. Sample B is least polar than A. To be discussed, there are many types of extraction such as stream distillation, liquid liquid extraction, solvent extraction, and so much more. For example, what we can mainly see in the industry is solvent extraction. Examples of solvent extractions are the extraction of uranium and plutonium salts from solution in nitric acid in nuclear fuel reprocessing using kerosene as solvent, and the extraction of benzene from reformed naphtha using sulfonyl as solvent. Both of these processes is called distillation. What is distillation? It is the process of vaporizing and condensing a liquid to purify or concentrate the substance or to separate a volatile substance from a less volatile substance. In practice, the purpose of our distillation is to obtain the main product which is the residue which is the base. In the petroleum industry, the process of distillation is to filter out the crude oil to obtain different petroleum products which is the main products. Okay, the difference between the two processes is that the petroleum distillation refining depends on a specific temperature for each of these fractions. It requires a specific boiling point needed and that the temperature is way higher. We, uh, for our distillation process, we only have one specific temperature which is the 40 degrees Celsius and it is lower compared to the petroleum refining distillation. For our temperature, it, we only have one specific temperature to extract the liquid from uh, the to extract the liquid from crystals. Is there any other type of chromatography technique other than TLC that can be used to identify the unknown? Discuss one of it. Yes, it is. Column chromatography is another kind of liquid chromatography. It works just like TLC. The same mobile phase and stationary phase can be used. The solid is packed into long grass column EDS, powder or slurry. The column may be several inches wide and a few feet long. A large amount of material can be purified on a chromatographic column. Then the solvent is put into the top of the column and allowed to run through by gravity. Same factors of adhesion and solution in TLC apply here. and I will be the first presenter for our experiment 1. Without any further ado, I'll move on with what is liquid liquid extraction. In order to purify the products of almost every organic process, the extraction is necessary at some point. Inorganic reagents are typically used in organic processes. A method called extraction is used to remove an organic chemical from an aqua solution or suspension. When natural tissue is removed, occasionally a complicated combination is produced. Additional separation techniques must be utilized in this situation. One such technique is liquid-liquid extraction, which divide the contents into three classes, which is acidic, basic, and natural. As you can see in the picture at the right side, there were two layers of solvent involved that show this method is actually based on the density of a solvent where the upper solvent is less than than the lower. Next, we move to Firstly, we label three separate flasks by acid flask, base flask and mixture flask. Then, we weigh 0.2 gram of solid acid, base and neutral compound and add them into a flask that was labeled as mixture. To avoid contamination, we use separate spatula and weighing board. Then, 10 ml of uh, dichloromethane was added into the flask and swirled gently to ensure that there are no undissolved samples visible. Then, we pour the mixture into separate funnels. The next step, we started with our extraction of the acid. To extract acid from the mixture, we added 10 ml of uh, 5% sodium hydroxide in the separation funnel and shake it vigorously several times and place the funnel at retort stand and we remove the stopper while waiting for the mixture to separate. 
When the layers have separated, we run off the bottom layer, which is dichloromethin, by opening the stop cork into a mixture flask, while the other layer into the acid flask. To get a more efficient results, we repeated this process. This time, we added 10 ml of 5% hydrochloric acid to separate the dichloromethin and base aqueous and repeat the process again. Then, the upper layers, which is hydrochloric acid extract, was poured into base flask. This process has been repeated for the second time. As for the remaining dichloromethin in the separation flask, they has been poured into neutral flask to be used in the next process, which is distillation. Then, as you can see at the right side of the slide, that is the arrangement of um, the apparatus for this distillation process. Then, the dichloromethane has been run off into a round bottom flask and added with anhydrous sodium sulfate to dry the excess water. Then, the boiling stones has been added into the round bottom flask to prevent superheating during the heating of steam bath. So, the dichloromethane has been removed by distillation using the apparatus and how it is happened because of when the steam bath has been heated to, to the boiling point of the dichloromethane which is 40 degrees Celsius. It will uh, dichloromethane will evaporate it and then flow to the and the gas will be flow into the condenser and become condensed into fluid again and then for the next process i will pass to the next member which is Shasha. thank you kistina for a very clear explanation about liquid liquid extraction and distillation now Let's move to the next step which is recrystallization of the acid. Recrystallization is a procedure for purifying an impure compound in a solvent. As the solvent cools, the solution becomes saturated with the solute and the solute will crystallize out. The first step as you can see in the picture 1, we added half dried of acid precipitate in flask which is labeled as single solvent flask and another half into another flask which is mixed solvent flask. After that, we added 5 ml hexane into single solvent flask and 5 ml methanol plus with water into mixed solvent flask. Next step, we heated up both flasks until it boils as you can see in the picture 3 and 5. After the heating up process, we left both flasks to cool at the room temperature. As in the, the picture 6, the crystallization present in the single solvent flask. We also can see a nearly nice pure crystal in the bottom of the flask. However, for the mixed solvent flask, we do left it for about 5 minutes in the room temperature but we're running out of time so we put it into the ice bath and wait for a few minutes. As you can see in the picture number 8, the, re the recrystallization occur but not in a nice condition or shape as it's supposedly to be like in the picture number 9. This happened because recrystallization need to proceed slowly to get a nearly pure crystal compound. If we cool the solution quickly, the impurities will precipitate out of the solution along with our desired product and resulting the crystal just like in the picture number 8, just like what we get. Afterward, we compound our single solvent solution with the group 5 to proceed to the next process which is vacuum. We use double layer filter paper to avoid leaking during the process so that we will get all the filtered crystal product and we let it dry at the room temperature as in the picture number 12. Now, let's move to the next process called sublimation. Sublimation is the transition of a substance directly from a solid phase to the gas phase without passing through the intermediate liquid phase. In this experiment, we observe the neutral flask that we left after the extraction of base and neutral process in part 1 that have been explained by Kistina. 
In that flask, we can see some dried crystal present. Then, we place the flask on a hot plate as in the picture one. Next step is we fill a test tube with some ice and we also wipe out the condensation or the moisture appears on the outer surface of the test tube to make sure that it is dry and clean because the final product will occur at the outer test tube. After that, we, claim, we clamp the test tube so that it is suspended inside the opening of the flask. And we use a hot plate by gently warm the bottom of the flask as shown in the picture tree. After 2 minutes, we can see a crystal of the compound appears on the bottom of the test tube just like pictured in the number 6. Now, let's have uh, Shakila for the next process called TLC. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. I am Shakila and thank you Shakila for a good explanation on recrystallization experiment and also sublimation experiment. On my part, I will explain the TLC experiment. In this experiment, we are going to learn how to use TLC technique to identify an unknown compound and how we can calculate the RF value to that represent the characteristic of the compound that we use in our experiment. For step procedure, we have three tips, tip A, tip B, and also tip C. We put substance A into A, substance B into B, and substance C into tip C. Then we dissolve a substance which 5 ml of this end. Next, we obtain two silica gel to separate the contents for an indicator and mark a horizontal layer, which end from the bottom and which end from the top of each TLC plate using a pencil. And not to forget, we also have to mark A, B and C at the bottom line that we draw earlier. After that, we use two developing chambers. In the first chamber, we fill in with 4.5 ml of hexen and also 0.5 ml of ethanol. While in the other chamber, we fill in with 4.5 ml of DCM and 0.5 ml of hexen. After we have done filling all developing chambers with the developing solvent, the lips might be closed to prevent the solvent from being evaporated. The next step is we spot all three simple solutions A, B, and C at each TLC plate using a capillary tube. To prevent our simple solution from being contaminated, different capillary tube must be used for each simple solution. Then we put one TLC plate into a hexane ethanol developing chamber and one TLC plate into this and hexane developing chamber. Next, we close the lid and wait until the solvent inside the chamber to reach the solvent from or the top line of the TLC plate that we draw here. After that, we have to dry it. After the TLC plate has been dried, we place the TLC plate on the short left line UV light and outline the shape that we see on the UV light using a pencil. For the precaution step, as a short left line attributed relation is dangerous, we must cover it with plastic. And here are the results that we get. You can see at the top, we write, we write E and D. E represents the TLC plate we put inside Hexen Ethanol Dupe Chamber and D represents the TLC plate we put inside this M Hexen Dupe Chamber. Then we will calculate the RF value of A, B and C of each TLC plate and here the RF value that we get. For A TLC plate, the RF value is, for A is 0 0.1, B is 0 0.2 and C is 0. For the TLC plate, the RF value for A is 0 0.05. B is 0 0.633 and C is 0. So that's all the explanation on the TLC experiment. Next, we will move to the discussion part. Now we move to the discussion part. I will explain uh, discussion number 2 and 3 while Shasha will explain the rest. For discussion number 2, one example of the extraction process in the industry is for extraction from point C. The type of extraction is solar extraction or liquid liquid extraction. First, the seeds are collected and cleaned with water and dried for two weeks. The seed are then separated from the seed coat and grown later into coarse particles using ammo. Next, the sample seed are dried in a wood fire oven and we powder it manually using a millstone. Then, the prepared sample will be inserted into timber, which will be loaded into the main chamber of solar extractor. After the solar extractor is put into the first container extraction solvent, the solvent will be heated. 
the shovel need will be folded into a chamber housing the timber of solid. When the solid chamber is on the floor, the chamber will be emptied automatically and the solvent will be formed back into the distillation flask. After many cycle, the laser compound will be concentrated in the distillation flask. In this extraction, hexane is used as a solvent and a mixture of oil and solvent from a distillation flask which has been concentrated is removed or will be removed for the distillation process. Discussion number 3 is about the difference in the selection within in the lab and also the selection process in petroleum refinery. The difference is the in petroleum refinery which fraction selection method. The principle behind this fraction selection is different components uh, in the mixture boils at different temperature. So the mixture uh, will be heated and the lower point substance will start to evaporate first from components back to liquid and separate out. Then we increase the temperature and similarly components will be separate out from lower boiling point to the higher boiling point. So that's all from me and I will pass to the Shasha to explain the discussion number one and number four. Thank you. In this experiment, there were many precautions need to be followed. Firstly, as you can see in the picture one, always firmly hold the stopper when shaking and regularly vent the funnel by opening the stop cord, just like what Kistina did. Also, remember to wear glove during this experiment and always protect yourself and your friend from unexpected chemical splashes due to the pressure that built in the funnel during the mixing and the chemical may violently be expelled from the funnel. In the picture 2, we use double layer filter paper to avoid leaking during the vacuum process so that we will get all the filtered crystal product. Next is to make sure to use a correct silica gel TLC plate that contain fluorescent indicator by checking and observing the UV light because it will only visible under the UV light. Next is to make sure that we close the lid of the chamber to saturate the solvent vapor and also to prevent the solvent being evaporated as shown as in the picture number 4. That's all. You may be asking, what else can we use to identify the unknown other than TLC? Besides TLC, Column chromatography is another kind of liquid chromatography that shown as the picture below. It works just like TLC, the same stationary phase and the same mobile phase that can be used. Instead of spreading a thin layer of stationary phase on a plate, the solid is packed into a long glass column either as a powdery or a slurry. Sometimes, these columns are several inches wide and a few feet long. A large amount of material can be purified on a chromatography column. And also, instead of letting a lean wick up through the stationary phase, the solvent is poured into the top of the column and allowed to run by the gravity. The same factor of adhesion and solution in TLC apply here. If the same solid phase and liquid phase from the TLC are used in a column, the compound will elute through the column in the same order that they elute across the TLC plate. That's all from us. Thank you. Okay. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. So, thank you, Jadal, for explaining experiment one. Now, I will continue the, the presentation by explaining experiment two. So, in experiment two, there are three methods that we use, which is dekistalization, sublimation, and TLC, thin layer chromatography. So, for the sub so for the dekistalization, uh, what we want to do is we want to purify. We want to purify the uh, we want to purify the acid compound, and for the sublimation method, we are also want to purify the neutral compound, and for the TLC thin layer chromatography, 
we actually want to identify the the unknown compound that we have so uh, so, so I will continue it uh, so I will be expanding each of the method that we use in the experiment what did we do and why did we do so uh, for the for the first experiment I will be expanding the sublimation first which is the sublimation of neutral compound so first, for the new neutral compound, we observe we observe our neutral flux. There is some dicrystal on the bottom of the neutral flux. So we know that this is a neutral compound for our experiment one, and then after that, we fill a tasty with ice. We fill a tasty with ice, and then we put the neutral flux that have dicrystal in on a hot plate. And we heat it gently. We heat it gently, and then we uh, and then the test tube filled with ice earlier. We clamp it. We clamp it with that thought stand, and then we put it at the mouth of the of the flask. We put it at the mouth of the flask, uh, and then we continue to heat the flask gently until. We can observe that there's a neutral powder on the bottom of the test tube. Now we know that the neutral. Now we know that uh, by by theory, we we conduct sublimation to purify the neutral compound. So the the dry crystal, the dry crystals that on the flies they might be not all of them are neutral compound but now we know that the neutral powder is actually neutral because when when we do experiment one the dicaster may be not 100 percent neutral but now we can ensure that it's more purified than before it's have mostly neutral on the bot at the bottom of the beaker Okay, that's, that's all for sublimation. I will continue with recrystallization after this. For the recrystallization of the acid, uh, which is to purify uh, the substance, uh, the, acid, the experiment started uh, when we, we, divide, uh, we divide into two flasks. One is a single solvent flask, one is a mixed solvent flask. So in this in this flask, uh, we put two gram of acid, of acid in, inside of it. Uh, two gram of acid inside of it. Inside, two gram of acid inside single solvent uh, flask, and two gram of acid inside mixed solvent flask. So for the single solvent flask, we put five millimeter of hexane. We, five millimeter of hexane is so the single solvent flask and then for the mixed solvent flask we put five millimeter of methanol and water so after we put uh, five millimeter of hexane in, inside silver, single solvent flask and five millimeter of methanol and water inside the mixed solvent flask we put both of the flasks on a hot plate and then uh, and then after that, we wait for the we wait for the for the liquid. We wait for the liquid to boil. And after it after it boils on the hot plate, we put it on the table. And we put it on the table in room temperature. And when in room temperature, we just need uh, to wait until we can see this kind of crystal inside of the flask. And after we, we put it, after we see that there's a crease inside the flask, we just uh, take it out and then we can see that this crease, this amazing and beautiful crystal that we have. Uh, and if we look uh, closely, it's kind of like slightly. Okay, for. Okay, after this, I'll be explaining about the PSC, the thin layer chromatography. Uh, I will continue uh, the thin layer chromatography.
which is the AC. Uh, so the experiment start when we have uh, AC base and new cell. We put it. Uh, each of them, uh, we we take two gram of acid base and uh, meter, and then we uh, we add five milliliter. Yeah. Five meter of uh, dichloromethyl uh, to the acid uh, base and neutral, and then we prepare a uh, developing 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 liquid or is there a liquid? Let's see. Developing solvent. Okay. And then we prepare a developing solvent, uh, which is the first developing solvent. We have one dike, we have one hexane and a nine dike dichloromethane, and then the other one we have nine. Hey, we have nine ethanol and one dichloromethane. Then uh, we put. Uh, we put this uh, two developing solvent inside a developing chamber inside two developing chamber one uh, the, the nine the nine liter of dichloromethane and one liter of hexane we put in one developing chamber and uh, nine ethanol and one dichloromethane we put in another developing chamber so we have two separate uh, developing chamber and then uh, we take a uh, Silica gel, we take a silica gel and then uh, we draw a line one cm uh, from the top and one cm from the bottom, and then we label ABC at the bottom bit. And then uh, we take another silica gel, we need uh, two silica gel, and then we did the same thing as we did as the earlier silica gel, and then after that, we put the silica gel inside each of the chamber. That one silica gel in one uh, chamber, which uh, one is the developing chamber that have uh, one millimeter of dichloromethane and nine millimeter of uh, hexane, and then one in the nine millimeter of ethanol and one millimeter of hexane. We put uh, we put each we put each developing chamber. A silica gel. Then when the silica gel uh, have and then uh, after we put it uh, inside the chamber, we take it out and then we dry it out. We dry it out on the table. We just uh, wait for it to dry. And then we take an ultraviolet device, we take an ultraviolet sensor device, and you uh, and light up UV day into the silica gel. And now we can see that the ABC that we have used in the capillary, capillary tube, we take the capillary tube from the uh, uh, each. A, B, C, each uh, color, each is, and then we can see here. And then after that, we can uh, calculate the distance between uh, the the one cm drum that we there. We take uh, how much distance does it have, and then with that we can uh, we can have an F, which we can know that what uh, what kind of what kind of What kind of compound is that solvent is? So we can identify unknown compound. Just like I said earlier, TLC, uh, thin layer chromatography, is to uh, identify unknown uh, compound. So that is all for me uh, and Jalal. Uh, thank you so much.